Michael, we're good when you Thank you for your patience. We need to have a forum so we can do business today. I want to welcome you all to the June uh, Board of Zoning Adjustment meeting. BZO hears two types of cases, variants and special permits, as well as appeals to code enforcement orders. Anyone giving testimony must be sworn in. So I'd like to swear you all in, a, in as a group if your intention is to testify today. So if you are, please stand. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you'll provide is the truth to the best of your knowledge and belief? If so, say I do. Thank you so much. Applicants will have five minutes to present each of their cases, and then will be given three minutes to address the board in a rebuttal. It is encouraged that speakers not repeat what anyone else has said, just for the sake of time. And with that being said, Mr. Freeze, are there preliminary matters? Uh, thank you, Mr. Jones. Yes. Uh, the first one is a um, re-stamping of a uh, stamp site plan at uh, 2918 Parsons Avenue. There's no adjustment to the variances. It's just that the site plan has changed slightly. If you want to go slide day, we'll see that in the uh, updated parking area, the original parking area showed head-in parking at 90 degrees. The updated parking plan shows angled parking at a leaf. Mr. Anderson, you want to come up and address the uh, board? Um, would you please give your name and indicate yes. how you've been sworn? John Ingwerson, and yes, I've been sworn. Thank you so much. Um, so you approved this site plan last year. I believe Jack Reynolds brought it through um, for the special license. And during the final inspection uh, by code enforcement, uh, they wrote up the fact that the parking was a, on a diagonal. As it turned out, the draftsman from Prime for some reason, made of 90 degrees, but they've always been at an angle. Okay. So we changed that site plan, and now we'll be able to have the code enforcement officer come out and spank and give these guys their occupancy permit. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. With that being said, uh, I don't know that we need to ask for anything from the audience. Oh, I just get excited. Is the board satisfied with that? Okay. So, with that being said, I will stand for the plan, and you've been. Well, I believe still need to vote on it. We do need to approve the change. Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion to uh, adopt the new drawing for stamping? So moved. Is there a second? I second. All in favor? Any, uh, Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. They shall be stamped. All right. Second potential preliminary matter uh, I want to ask the audience is uh, the applicant for BZA 22 158 at address 1025 Oak Street. Is uh, that applicant in the audience? All right. We were unsure whether that would be heard tonight. Uh, it will not. Okay. And which one was that again? But the case 22 158 1025 Oak Street. It was a case that was heard in April. Um, there were some conditions that uh, the applicant is having trouble meeting, and uh, we're going to change our recommendation of the uh, conditions for that uh, approval. Very good. Thank you so much. Our regular agenda. Okay. So we will call case number one BZA 22057 for 1054 to 1058 West Mount Street. Would you please come forward? And when you do approach the table, uh, when you get an opportunity, everybody should, that is giving that money should sign the name. And with that being said, gentlemen, what are your names? And please indicate whether or not you've been sworn. Jesse Wells, yes, I've been sworn. Brian Hunt, yes, I've been sworn. Very good. Thank you. Okay, uh, 1054 through 1058 West Mount Street is located at the northeast corner of West Mount Street, South Cypress Avenue. The site is on C4 Commercial and located within the 10 Aries Mission. The 0 0.08 acre site is built with a uh, tire service shop. To the north is Interstate 70, to the east is a plumbing business. To the south is Mount Calvary Cemetery, and the east is a used car lot. The applicant requests a special permit for a portable building to be kept on site to store tires. Section 338912, portable building. Any portable building requires a special permit in any zoning district for use on private property. 
Uh, plan division is generally supported by the request on the condition of screening along the West Mount Street frontage. Both West Franklin plan and C2P2 design guidelines recommend loading, storage, and other external activities that generate noise and other impacts should not face public rights of way or residential or institutional uses. In the event that it is not possible, such areas should be screened for the West Franklinton plan. Uh, screening should include a combination of the following items, walls, mounds, trees, shrubs, and or landscaping. The Division of Traffic Management can be supportive of the request to establish a direct access point. Uh, if you can see from the uh, street here, that curb cut was not, it's not an established curb cut. Uh, it's just from years of trucks kind of going over the sidewalk. But the applicant has petitioned the Division of Traffic Management for that to become a curb cut. Uh, the Division of Traffic Management can be supportive of the request to establish a direct access point uh, from West Mount Street onto West, uh, from the site onto West Mount Street subject to the following conditions. First, that the Board of Zoning Adjustment would need to first approve any variance, or in this case, a special permit uh, that might be necessary associated with the use of a 53-foot trailer on the property. Two, the access point will need to be limited to a maximum width of 35 feet and located in a position that would allow for a truck exiting the site to maneuver onto West Mount Street with a singular forward loading. Third, the curb, grass lawn, and sidewalk along West Mount Street frontage of the property line that has been damaged by vehicles entering and exiting the site will need to be reestablished. When not in use, the access point will need to be controlled by a gate or similar feature designed to maximize the ability to screen the West Mount Street frontage of the property. Uh, the Division of Track Management asks that the applicant work with the planning division regarding the design. So whether it's an you know, iron fence or gate, whatever. Um, as it is understood that trucks are able to enter the site by means of South Cypress Avenue, and the alley north of the site, and in order to avoid a situation where a truck would be queued with the West Mount Street while waiting to access the site, this access point is not to be used for trucks directly entering the site from West Mount Street. Uh, so that satisfies that. There are the conditions from the Division of Traffic Management and the Franklinton Area Commission recommends approval. City staff can recommend approval with the adoption of the traffic management conditions, the second of which will also satisfy the planning division's request to screen the storage trailer. The access point, which can reiterate, the access point will need to be controlled by a gate or similar feature designed to maximize the ability to screen the West Mount Street frontage of the property. And for the conditions, I've just reiterated what the Division of Traffic Management has stated previously. Yeah, no, thank you so much. So those are the conditions under which they should be considered for approval by the board as well. Correct. Okay, thank you. You understand these conditions? I do. Okay. You have the recommendation of the Franklinton Area Commission and the conditional approval from city staff. Is there anything additional that you'd like to add? I'd like to add something if I could. Uh, I'm legal counsel for RJ Tire Service, which is the owner of the property. Just on the record, I'd like to note that we do meet the three criteria for the special permit under the code. Um, the granting of the special permit will not be detrimental to the public good. In fact, it will benefit the public good by providing a safe and sanitary means to keep tires on the property until they can be disposed. Granting the special permit will not substantially impair the general purpose or intent of the zoning district in which the property is located. And the special permit is not significantly incompatible with the general character of the neighborhood. I'd just like to point out that the Franklin County CDL skills testing location is less than 500 feet from this property. So semi trucks and trailers are pretty common in the area. Okay, so I do have a question for staff. So there's not a variance for putting the for putting the building. Routinely, we give a variance to put a temporary building on site. Uh, no, it's always a special permit if it's a portable building. Oftentimes, associated with special permits are variances to location or distance separations. Okay. In this case, it's completely surrounded by. If you want to go back to the zone map, uh, commercial or manufacturing. So there's no distance separation. There, there, there are no associated variances. The the location is appropriate. Okay. With that being said, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak for or against this proposal? Seeing and hearing none, is there anyone from the BVA that would like to comment or ask questions? I guess one question is, am I to assume then the, the portable building is the trailer? Yes. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's it. Okay. I said, are you, you guys are okay with the conditions or recommendations? Mm -hmm. well, I call the question. I'll with call the question. With the conditions as presented. With the conditions as presented. Please call the roll. Ms. Engelhoff? 
Yes. Mr. Waldley or Mr. Nolico? Yes. Uh, Acting Chair Jones? Yes. Variances are your respect for me is granted. Thank you, Master Chair Project. And I'm going to turn it over to our regular chair. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Okay, A97 Lock Avenue. The applicant here for A97 Lock Avenue. This would be my case. I do, I do not believe the applicant appears to be here. Okay. Now, five one one five Fisher Road. That's thirty seven. Being passed down is a. Email that I uh, received uh, last week from a neighboring property owner. With this case? Yes. Thank you. BCA uh, 23 024 5115 Fisher Road. It's located on the southeast corner of Fisher Road and Manor Park Drive, uh, with parcel located on the west side of Manor Park Drive. Parcels are zoned. M manufacturing districts and they're located in the far west side area of mission. Parcels along the south side of Fisher Road total 103.15 acres and are currently developed with a manufacturing plant and a rail, railroad depot. The six acre parcel located on the west side of Manor Park Drive was previously developed with a landscape stone supply company, which was recently demolished. Surrounding uses are primarily manufacturing with agricultural fields to the west and single unit residential Developments further to the south. The yeah, applicant proposes to expand the existing parking lot along Fisher Road to the east and to install a security fence that is seven feet and nine inches tall. The requested variances are to reduce the building setback for the fence from 60 feet to half a foot along Fisher Road and from 25 feet to about a half a foot along Manor Park Drive and to reduce the parking setback line from 25 feet to 10 feet. Planning supports the proposal as presented. The Traeger Roberts area plan states that parking should be hidden to the greatest extent possible by locating it to the rear side of the building or by extensive landscaping. And landscaping should be used to soften the industrial buildings along front elevations or elevations that face public streets. Due to the, due to the existing landscape condition between the proposal and Fisher Road, planning supports the proposal as presented. Planning encourages the installation of a landscape screen along the front edge of the existing parking lot but there's not a condition to support that, which after seeing our revised site plans, they were comfortable with that. Uh, Division of Traffic Management requests the following condition. The traffic access study will need to be completed for the parking lot expansion, and the applicant will need to complete any necessary improvements or access revisions as approved by the Department of uh, Public Service. Division of Traffic Management does not anticipate uh, that condition impacting uh, these various requests at all. The Far West Side Area Commission recommends approval of requested variances. Staff can recommend approval because uh, the requested variances will allow the applicant to provide additional parking for employees and help secure their newly acquired property. The requested variances are not anticipated to alter the existing character of the area. And the condition recommended is. Traffic access study will need to be completed for the parking lot expansion, and the applicant will need to complete any necessary improvements or access provisions as approved by the Department of Traffic Public Service. Okay, can you state your name for the record, whether or not you were sworn in? Sarah Wilson, I was sworn in. Uh, Charles T. Wilson, I was sworn in. Okay. Do you agree with the conditions that the department is requesting? The traffic yes. study and the, okay. Mars, Mars was open to both of those. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have anything else to add about the application? No. Do we have any questions from the board? No. Nope. Is there anybody here that wants to speak about this application? I will note that we have a objection um, from a concerned citizen um, about the setback. I'll call the question. Person's been called. Do we want to call the roll, please? Mr. Jones? 
Yes. Mr. Malakum? Yes. Ms. Engelhoff? Yes. Chair Palmer Bailey? Yes. James Brandon. 1439 Oak Street. Good afternoon. I'm Harry Tellers, and yes, I have been sworn in. Okay, thank you. Can you sign your name on the sign in sheet right there, please? Either one. Thanks. Okay. Uh, 1439 Oak Street is located on the south side of Oak Street. Uh, approximately 265 feet west of Miller Avenue. The site is on R3 Road Nantle and is located within the Near East Area Commission. Uh, the site is currently undeveloped, uh, however, it consists of two undeveloped parcels, 010-042-530 and 010-049-536. Surrounding uses are single and convenient residential dwellings. The applicant proposes to combine the two parcels into one and split them into three equal-sized lots for the development of three single-unit dwellings. The request for answers to reduce the required lot width from 50 feet to 24 feet, and reduce the lot area for single-unit dwelling from 5,000 square feet to 3,672 square feet. Uh, listed in your agenda heading is a variance to reduce the driveway width from 10 feet to 9 feet. However, the uh, applicants have resubmitted a site plan that shows that they are complying with that code section. They're providing at least the minimum com uh, code compliant 10 feet. So. There are only two premises being requested. Uh, planning states that the elevations are consistent with the Near East Area Plan Design Guidelines, and the revised site plan relocates detached garages closer to the rear of the lot line. Staff continue to encourage garages to be re relocated as close to the rear lot line as possible to better reflect surrounding development patterns that do not condition support in this revision. Uh, the Division of Traffic Management states that for the currently proposed site layout, the driveways connecting between the proposed garage spaces and the public alley to the south of the site, site minimum 10 feet of uh, width would appear to be required. Uh, and as I stated previously, that has since been uh, uh, commented. Uh, the applicant has since re uh, received the recommendation of the Near East Area Commission. Uh, Near, Near East Area Commission is recommending approval. City staff is also recommending approval. Uh, the existing lots are approximately 35, 36 feet wide, and are most of their neighboring neighboring lots, most of which contain two unit dwellings. Staff can recommend approval as the applicant is proposing single unit dwellings, which would incur the same density as the neighboring two unit dwellings. We're not asking for any conditions. Thank you. Madam Chair, turn it back over to you. Okay. Mrs. Ellis, I know here that you're the president of A2Z Group. Yes, ma'am. Do you have anything to add about this no, application? It was self explanatory. I thought it was a really good project. And I'm ready to start. <laughs> Do we have any questions? Is there anybody here that wants to speak about this application? Okay. Ready to call I'll call a question. President to call, please call the roll. Mr. Malika? Yes. Ms. Agola? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Here. Yes. Here's Brandon. Thank you so much. I'll be here. 962 East Long Street. Yeah. Nine sixty two East Long Street is located on the south side of East Long Street, approximately one hundred feet, one hundred fifty feet east of North Seventeenth Street. It is zoned R two residential in the Near East Area Commission. The point oh nine acre site is undeveloped. Surrounding uses are primarily residential. The applicant proposes to construct a two unit dwelling. Variances are being requested to reduce the width of four parking spaces from nine feet to eight feet, to reduce the setback along East Long Street from 14 feet to 13 feet, to reduce the total side yard from 6.6 .6 feet to five feet, and to reduce the east uh, side yard from five feet to two feet, and the west side yard from five feet to three feet. Uh, planning supports this proposal as it is generally consistent with the Near East Area Plan Guidelines for Housing. The Division of Traffic Management had no comments, and the North Central Area Commission recommends approval of this request. Staff can recommend approval of the requested variants because they are negligible, and the proposed dwelling is similar in character to the surrounding neighborhood. 
Additionally, staff note that the proposed two unit dwelling would provide housing in an area that is in need and the reduced parking space size is necessary to provide a compliant number of parking spaces. Madam Chair. Okay. Can you state your names for the record and what how you were sworn in? Uh, Paul Ross. Yes, I was. Uh, Dave Perry. Yes, I've been sworn. Okay. Do you have anything to add to this application? Uh, just briefly, yes. Um, the applicant proposes to build a two family dwelling, as staff stated. The site is owned R2F. We have requested minor, minor site standards variances for the new construction. The, the lot meets a lot of record standards for the R2F district. Um, and the site, there, there was a two family dwelling in the parcel that was raised in 2014. Oh, oh, just one thing. Um, the area commission is the Near East Area Commission rather than North Central. Oh, okay. Is there anybody here that wants to speak about this application? Okay, board members, do we have any other questions? I'll call the question. Question has been called. Please call the roll. Ms. Agelhoff? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Malacca? Yes. Chair Pond Bailey? Yes. Mr. Granite? Great. Thank you. 76 East Casa Street, Casa? Casa? Ready? Okay, 76 East Casa Street is located on the north side of East Casa Street, uh, approximately 45 feet east of City Park Avenue. The site is zoned R2F residential and is located within the German village. Uh, the 0 0.07 acre site is built with a 1,224 square foot dwelling. Surrounding uses are primarily single unit residential. In May of 2018, the BZA approved multiple variances uh, for BZ 18 037 that will allow for the combination of the subject site with the abutting property at 804 City Park Avenue with the intention of connecting the two dwellings. Uh, that proposal never happened, and, and the applicant is now here to press variances. Oh, well, let me just start start with a minute. The suburb site and the abutting property at 84 City Park Avenue are owned by the same entity as uh, the applicant. The applicant initially proposed to remove the off-field parking and install a swimming pool and requested variances to legitimize existing conditions for the dwelling, which would be to reduce the building setback from 10 feet to 6 inches, to reduce the required side yard from 5 feet to 1 foot, and again, initially requested a variance to reduce the parking from two to zero. Uh, after consultation with the Division of Traffic Management and German Village Commission, the request is still is to keep one parking space on site and legitimize the parking, which would be to reduce the minimum number of parking spaces from two to one in existing condition. Uh, there is no council adopted plan in this area. The site does fall within the German Village Air Architectural Review Commission. The German Village Commission has recommended approval. City staff can recommend approval as the variances are to legitimize existing conditions. And by keeping the curb cut, uh, they are also able to provide an outside parking space. And we're not asking for any conditions. Madam Chair. So all the variances are existing Correct. conditions? Okay. Okay, can you state your name for the record and whether or not you were sworn in? Sure. Nathan Sampson. And yes, it was. Okay. Do you have anything to add to this application? Um, no, I think just the three variances we're requesting. Um, are to legitimize existing conditions uh, on site currently. So we're just trying to clear it up. Okay. okay. Do we have anybody who wants to speak about this application? Board members, do we have any questions for the applicant? No. I'll call a question. Question has been called. Please call the roll. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Malacca? Yes. Ms. Agelhoff? Yes. Mr. Mark Bailey? Yes. Mr. Granted. Thank you very much. 1080 and 1100 Obex Road. Mm -hmm. 1080 and 1100 Obex Road is located on the north side of Obex Road, approximately 103 feet west of Cross Point Drive, zone RR Rural Residential District, and it's located in the far south Columbus Area Commission. 1080 Obex Road is a 10 acre parcel which is developed with a church and a garage. And 1100 Obex Road is a one acre parcel which is developed with a single unit dwelling. Trial uses are primarily single unit dwellings with a church and a parcel to the south. 
The applicant proposes to split 4.611 acres of the parcel located at 1080 Obetz Road to be combined with 1100 Obetz Road and request a variance to reduce the minimum lot area for the church from 5 acres to 4.39 acres. In 2020, the EZA approved variance to reduce the required lot area from 5 acres to uh, 1 acre for the lot split resulting in single unit dwelling at 1100 Obetz Road. Planning has no comment on the proposed variance as the Scioto Southland plan uh, does not address this matter. Staff note that no changes are currently proposed to existing built conditions on site. The following comments from Division of Traffic Management have yet to be addressed. Uh, right way dedication of 40 feet from the sign line at Obax Road will be required. If the 4.611 acre lot will be combined with the existing one acre lot at 1100 Obax Road, it would appear that the proposed 20 foot ingress egress easement in the eastern portion of the remaining 4.39 acre lot would be unnecessary. If the proposed 20 foot ingress egress easement in the eastern portion of the remaining 4.3 acre lot would continue to be a proposed discussion with the Franklin County Engineer's Office would be, would be necessary to determine whether or not access to Obex Road would be supported at this location. Far South Columbus Area Commission recommends approval of the requested variance. Staff recommends disapproval. Staff questions the ne necessity of the request as a lot can be split without a variance. Applicant has failed to demonstrate a hardship or practical difficulty or even provide a reason as to why the lot must be reduced to 4.39 acres. Further applicants have not addressed any of the comments from Division of Traffic Management at the writing of this report. Okay, so I can say your name when you're sworn in. Daniel yeah, Johnson, I have been sworn in. So it looks like we got some questions from Division of Traffic Management, and they're here tonight, so they can um, you can address those right. if you like, or we can get them. Um, that was um, that has been addressed. Um, the they did actually receive the updated copy of the. Um, proposal with the last split from the survey, and that does include um, pretty much where the entrance of the turf track is, all the way over to the where the proposed white foot egress, um, egress is, all the way to the back parcel. That was put in as an egress right away, um, so that no matter whether the church is no longer there, we still have that right away and an access point to get to the back acreage without having to create another access point to that road, which is what the county asked for. That's the, station name. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is Kevin Thomas from the traffic management. Um, I have not personally seen that yet, so I'm not sure who you sent that to. In the morning. Okay, you do not forward that over to me. So the last version that we saw was the version here that shows the egress easement on the east side of the parcel. Generally, this statement is correct. As long as the egress ingress easement can sit, contains the existing access point for the church, which would mean they don't need to create a new access point. We would be in favor of that as a as a okay, which um, the original we went all the way over that way is that the church is never there with the kind of the way that the traffic management is and with the 360 feet between access points there's nowhere else on that property that a new builder could put another access point to have to create another access point yeah that's generally that's correct you would either have to remove the existing access point to create a new one or you would have to reach you would have to seek a variance to the franklin county access requirements so okay. yeah I, I agree with that okay. okay so the other question that we have here is why is the lot being split so the um the email that was sent over to um steven smedley was with the um with the church being a um, the oldest church in the Baptist Church in Ohio. Um, they do have a very dwindling congregation. They rent their um, fellowship hall down to a non-denominational church. They have a daycare that's rented from that for the past 30 years, which in their lease agreement, they do have first rights to buy in the building. Um, the church congregation is 65 years of age to 96 years of age. And so their, their current person that was taking care of the lawns had two heart attacks last year. On the um, so our proposal was to purchase the back acreage, A, to be able to put in a blocking fence in the back um, southwest corner, or southeast west corner, which leads out to another field, which would be part of that property, which in our um, experience in the past three years of living there has allowed the four wheelers, drug dealers, and homeless who go through and travel through that passageway, which would cut that off. So they wouldn't have to back to that field any longer. Um, and then the 
um, fencing in what he rents at the perimeter. So you can fence without having the parcels split. Correct. Which the which buying the parcel from the turf would allow the turfs to have additional funds to keep them afloat from. Oh, okay, so you're splitting it to sell the piece that you're not using. No, we are both. Our long term goal is to build our game back there, and we do want to put a full barn eventually on the back property. And so, originally, we wanted the full barn to be on that back acreage so that when we did build the um, home 10, 15 years down the road, that that was included in that property. Well, since there is not a, the city does not allow a large shed on a without a residence on it, then we could not have that parcel be separate from our current and existing parcel and put a full barn back there. So that is why the entire back new parcel will be adjoined with um, 1100 OVETs and then down the road we'll do this whole entire process over. But why, why not just provide five acres for the church and not be here? Um, where it makes sense where the property lines went. This jagged line makes sense. Yep, the back where they have over there is because that cuts right through a field, that went through a ball field. It's not, yeah, it's the baseball diamond. That's it, maybe. Yeah, that's the fence over it. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So the baseball diamond stays with the church. No, the baseball diamond will become our property. Oh. So everything that is, so there is a tree line and a fence line that's not on the and that each tree line. Oh, so you're separating the property at the tree line. Okay, so the tree line is jagged. Yep, um, yep it goes from where that line is, where the solid line is on the back side of the driveway or the parking lot, that is the tree line. And then they have, we still want them to be able to leave enough Turn back so we can leave enough um, room there for the daycare to be directly to have their access to the shed and things like that because they also have to have access to get to their back there. Okay. Any questions answered? No. Is there is there a concern that you have with this action? Yeah. Um it just doesn't make sense we come in for 4.39 we get at five acres to not be. And I've you know, that's that's what, what, before we ever started this process, we had already settled on a price on the acres that we had, and the church was not also not willing to go less on what the price was on what we had settled. And it's actually as soon as this is all uh, approved, we will be able to finally close our contract after two years. Okay, well, that satisfied me. I wish you would have told us that two months ago when we acted that, and you didn't have an answer. Okay. Well, when I asked exactly what was wanting to be said or needed to be asked, I couldn't get an exact answer of what you wanted. Well, it's a pretty obvious question. Why, why not five acres? And you just answered it. That's all we wanted to know. That's why we're in dispute. Okay. So we got, we're clear on the less than five acres. Is there anybody here that wants to speak about this application? Board members, do we have any other questions? Call the question. Questions have been called. Please call the roll. Mr. Malenko? Yes. Ms. Agelbaugh? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Chair Paul Bailey? Yes. Fairness granted. Thank you. Thank you. 2897 and 2899 Cranston Drive. All right. All right. BCA 23-039. 2897 to 2899 Cranston Drive is located on the south side of Cranston Drive, approximately 550 feet west of Sawmill Road. Existing zoning is AR-12 Residential District and is part of the Northwest Civic Association. The uh, 0.37 acre site is currently developed with a two-unit dwelling. Surrounding uses include similar two-unit dwellings as well as an apartment complex to the north, two-unit dwellings, a bank, and a shopping center to the east. A mix of single unit and multi unit dwellings to the south, and a similar mix of single unit and multi unit dwellings to the west. The applicant proposes to legitimize an existing privacy fence that is taller than two and one half feet in height with opacity greater than 25% within a required yard abutting vehicular access. 
Uh, planning has no comment on the variance request as the Northwest plan does not address vision clearance. However, the applicant is encouraged to consider adding a street tree in consultation with the city forester. Plan recommends that residential areas be buffered with landscaping and as such staff encourages the incorporation of a street tree. Division of traffic management states that the request of variance would not appear to adversely impact required sight lines at adjacent driveways or intersections. And the Northwest Civic Association recommends uh, disapproval of this request. As I understand it, uh, the main reason for their disapproval was mainly uh, because of the material of the existing fence itself. They felt that it did not fit with the aesthetics of the neighborhood. Is it this fence or the other fence? It is this fence, yes, with the, uh, the other orgated you just showed? Right here. Or the other picture you just showed? Right here. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. So that, that picture was taken from like this side at an oblique angle there. Okay. Yeah. Which is artistic. <laughs> certainly, certainly. So the city city department's recommendation is actually that of approval. Uh, staff can recommend approval of this request as the location of the privacy fence does not adversely impact the required sight lines at adjacent driveways or intersections, and thus does not pose a safety hazard. We do, however, recommend uh, that the applicant shall reduce the height of the fence to at or below six feet. If you look at uh, the uh, site pictures that we took, these posts do uh, exceed six feet in height, which uh, uh, by the zoning code would then make this a structure. So we recommend that the uh, applicant uh, reduce the height of those posts and that would uh, bring this fence into compliance then. And I believe the uh, applicant has agreed to that condition. Chair. Okay, can you state your name, whether or not you were sworn in? Roger Wagner, yes, I'm sworn. Okay. Um, do you have, well, I have a question. Um, you've had the property how long? So I've owned that property about 30 years. And you put the fence in? I did not put the fence in. I was renting to, kind of renting to a couple uh, on both sides. They, they, hand, uh, they uh, possess both sides. And uh, they were going to buy it. And uh, they put the fence up without my knowledge. They use the materials without my knowledge. And then they moved out, deciding to go someplace else. Okay. Uh, the fence has been there about 10 years, a little over 10 years. Uh, and the key word is don't run to your brother in law. <laughs> Can we note it? <laughs> Did you attend the Northwest Civic Association meeting? Yes. What was their objection? What they they thought it was too California like. Oh, wow. Okay. And again, I say that respectfully. Yeah. I, okay. I'm not bragging on anybody. Okay. Staff, what did you mean when you said street tree? I see street trees there, so I'm not sure. Uh, that was just Planning's comment. Uh, they're, when they refer to street trees, they're speaking specifically about uh, trees within the uh, right of way. But I mean, okay. there's plenty of yeah. landscaping okay. already there. Okay. Is there anybody here that wants to speak about this application? Please come forward, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. Can you pass the microphone over? Yeah. State your name, please. Let me sworn in. Hello, Monica Tuttle on behalf of NW Northwest Civic Association. Oh, okay. I have been sworn. Go ahead. Um, applicant did appear at the Northwest Civic Association meeting. We discussed with the applicant the um we had ha hoped that he would reduce the height, and we asked if he would reduce the height to four, approximately four, four and a half feet, and he said that he was not interested in doing so. Um, the neighbors and the community are not a fan of the fence. It is not fitting with the neighborhood. Both the height and the opacity are inconsistent with the surrounding areas. And to clarify, planning does say, or I can't remember if it's planning or who it was, it, un, it does not seem to block the sight lines, but it, I mean, it's pretty obstructive. So, of what? It was a oh. traffic. Coming out, thank you, traffic. Of coming out of the driveways of seeing down the streets. Where that, I'm sorry, go back to the picture. That's sorry, the other picture. That's like where that park. trunk is right there. Yeah. Is that the, yeah. Okay. There are two driveways. Yep, there's a driveway on either side. Looks like there's two car lengths between the fence and the street. Are there it's, it's not. Go quite. back to the previous picture, please. Yeah. So, it, that's kind of a funny angle of the way that you're looking at it. I mean, you can look at the overhead, but. And we also have um, 
now. This would give us the dimensions. Yeah. But applicants, I mean, looking at a variance, six of the seven factors do not support granting this variance. Um, we are pretty detailed in our response and in, in our notes to um, to Mr. Kerr. I don't think I have those notes. Do we? The recommendation form. The recommendation form should be in there. If not, I can bring it up on my files. Can you articulate what you're saying for us? Of course. Yeah, I usually yeah. So it. six of the seven factors to be considered for granting a variance warrant a negative finding. One, there is beneficial use of the property without the variance. Two, the variance is substantial in this case. Both, I mean, we're talking about a difference in height of two and a half feet to just over six feet. Three, the variance affects the essential character of the neighborhood and adjoining properties suffer. It does not lend to the, the, the overall look of the neighborhood and numerous residents in that area were concerned about it. Um, four, does not apply and it could, you could argue that it, it weighs in favor of granting the variance. Number five, violation occurred after the owner purchased the property. I understand that he may not have been the one that erected the fence. However, this was his property. He's ultimately responsible for it. And whether or not he knew that there was, I mean, if it went up 10 years ago, he should have addressed this issue 10 years ago. If you look at the, um, I don't know when the fence was put in. There have been numerous complaints and this has been on the radar since 2020. Applicant has not taken any steps to address it. The Posts that are taller than six feet, applicant has indicated he will remove. However, in the past three years, he has not taken any steps to do so. Um, so, number six, owner's predicament can be obviated by removal or height reduction of the fence. And seven, the variance does not maintain the spirit and intent behind the zoning requirement. Okay. So, those are. Those are, and at one point, applicant told us that he was trying to avoid the expense of the removal of the fence. Um, however, when we asked if he would reduce the height of the fence, possibly by taking off of the sheet metal, which is held on with just sheet screws, um, he indicated that if he did that, he would like to replace it with a different material. So I don't want to speak for the applicant. Obviously, he's here to answer those questions. Um, but NWCA was trying to find out a compromise that would work both with the neighbors and with the applicant, um, and maybe going with that four foot height, which is the separation between the two different um, materials that are incorporated there. And um, that did not seem to be of interest to the applicant. And therefore, as it stands, we would we would oppose the variance. I have a question for Thank staff. Uh, is there no backyard? Are they using this as their backyard in the front? Basically, yes, it's a it's a front like a, 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 a courtyard. Courtyard, yeah. So there right. is but a, there's substantial. There is a rear yard. Okay, so it's substantial. They're not they're not doing it to compensate for not having a backyard. As far as I understand, there is access to a rear yard. Yes. All right, thank you. Basically, the intent when they first put that in was a safety factor. Because there were things going on in the neighborhood at that time that were not considered safe. Okay, they had two kids. That's one of the reasons why they they put that up. Now, I'm confused in that you said that if I take the top piece off, then that would be acceptable, but yet it still doesn't come anywhere close to the two and a half foot to, foot. Uh, so, sir, I, are you addressing your questions to us? Because you're not allowed to address the, okay, that's what, the witnesses. But you can. So I, I don't. I, I don't understand exactly the logic there, other than you don't like corrugated steel. I understand, but that's the only reason. Well, would you be open to removing the top portion and just leaving the bottom four feet, if that would appease the, your neighbors? Sure. Okay. On all, even that squared section. That's a well, gate. Pardon? That's a gate. But I guess the gate can't be six feet either. So I'm saying if you took down the corrugated metal there to make it four feet, you'd still have to do something to that other piece to make it four feet to be compliant. 
fine. I mean, I'm not asking you to do it. I don't know. I, I just, I, I don't know what's involved there. I really didn't focus on that part of it, but whatever it takes. Here. So it sounds like you don't even need to variance anymore if that's the case, right? What's that? They don't need a variance for anything over 30 inches. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it looks like what we're saying is um, we're going to deny this variance because the variance that's being requested is to allow the opaque fence over one and a half feet in height. And so we're going to disallow that. Is that correct? Or we can adjust the language of the uh, variance request since since the applicant is here. If they agree to that, we can adjust the language and approve it. But the notice is going out for something different. That's a good. But I think they, they well, have a lesser. Yeah, if the notice is that when I incorrectly say one and a half feet and you reduce it to four, then it's he's higher than what would have been required. So that's. It'd be the opposite. If we said to reduce the six and you approve four, then we'd be well, no, actually that wouldn't matter either. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna allow the opaque fence over four, four feet. Up to four. Up, up to, to four, four feet. feet. Okay. And so up to four feet even, just to make sure. Up to four feet even. Okay. And we, we want to get rid of the 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 steel. Okay, we can write that in as a condition. Yeah. Remove, except the gate. Well, well, there's so do I have to? There's some steel in the middle fence. Yeah, oh yes. Right. So I would this section. Yeah. Yeah, I think that yeah. So we can't just say steel. I would just say give them a forty-eight inch. Yeah, that'd be my recommendation. Yep. So no steel. That's something you can negotiate if you wish with the Northwest Civic Association. We're just telling you, you can have up to 48 inches. Okay. 48 inch height, opaque fence. Yep. Opaque? Well, it's solid. It's solid. Not opaque, you can't, okay. can't see through it because that solid. it looks like brick at the bottom. It's like hardy board. Okay. So, okay. Compromise. Do we have any other, anybody else wants to speak about this application? Okay. Are you ready to call the question? Thank you. I will call the question with the amended changes. Okay. Please call the roll. Ms. Abelhoff? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Malaka? Yes. Fair Palm Bailey? Yes. Thanks. Granted. Thank you. Thanks. 993 East 21st Avenue. All right, 993 East 21st Avenue is located on the south side of 23rd Avenue, uh, approximately 80 feet west of Lexington Avenue. The site is zoned RFP residential and it is located within the South Lincoln Area Commission. The site is built with a single unit dwelling. Surrounding uses are primarily single unit residential dwellings. The applicant proposes to legitimize the carport that was constructed in the side yard. And request a variance to reduce the minimum side yard from three feet to zero feet. Home citywide plan policy to state that garages can be compatible and similar in character to the existing nearby structures in terms of height, width, setback, and lot coverage. The Division of Traffic Management has no comments, and the South London Area Commission recommends uh, this approval. And I see Ms. Peggy is here to elaborate on that. Uh, city staff consistently recommends this approval to request to allow parking in required side or rear yards, and we're not recommending any conditions. Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to say that. Well, Done. Right. Can you state your names and whether you were sworn in? Tanya Turns. Yes, I was. I'm Barbara Turns. I was sworn Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, why are you wanting to go down to a zero foot side yard? Because it's already there. Oh, this was existing condition. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. I'm sorry. Oh. I think you couldn't do it a better way. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand staff's disapproval. Consistency. 
I think that it looks like it matches with the house. And there's already a fence that belongs to somebody that's at the lot line and prevents um, reasonable maintenance of either side, frankly. But I'm sorry, we're getting too far. Did, how long have you owned the property? So, the, and I'm speaking for mine, just because of her health. She's the owner. She is the owner. Okay, yes. go ahead. Um, so, the house has been, my, my grandfather purchased the home for my parents many years ago. Okay. Um, and the carport was built back in 2008. My grandfather, along with the previous owners of Next Door, okay. um, actually built the carport together okay. as a just a verbal handshake agreement. Okay. Um, the issue, from my understanding, from speaking to the neighbor, the issue came at hand when she started work on her basement. The basement was caving in beforehand, before she owned the property. When she started work on her basement, okay. then something went awry, according to her, when I spoke with her, and there was leakage that began. Um, it was the what? There was leakage in her basement after she began construction on her basement. Um, before that, there weren't any issues. Uh, the carport's been there all this time. There's not been any issue from any previous neighbor um, or anyone else. And so we tried to compromise with her to uh, put gutters up on because she made the uh, complaint that there was drainage that was caving in her wall again. After she had told me that whoever did the work on her basement originally messed up something and that was that. I don't know what they did. She didn't tell me specifically, uh, but we did try to compromise with her to put gutters up. She didn't want that. Um, she said that it was damaging her home. She then went in and there's now a drain. She poured her own concrete and drainage on her side of the fence, which is on the, if you're looking at the picture on the right side of the fence. So on the yellow side, mm -hmm. which is the neighbor's home, there's now drainage and everything down there that goes out to the street that she's done herself. So at this point, there's nothing that's doing any type of damage to her home at all at this point. Okay. Did you, when you, do you know if there's an easement that already exists um, that allows you on to the, from the rear of the home? Huh? From the rear of the home? From the side of the home since you're on the zero line, like if you would need to, to go and like something below the fence and you need to go and get something to move over. Oh yeah, we there's access, we can go around there. There's nothing cutting it off like from the front right there. Okay. There's no gate or anything. That is how it is as it is right now. So if something goes over the fence, we can just walk over there and go grab it. But you have permission to do that? If, yeah, we obviously have permission, but yes, there's- No, the arranging at the beginning, when you set this up because you're at the property line. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, at the beginning, yes. That okay. was like, that was a so verbal agreement. In writing, that not in writing. This was done back in two thousand and eight okay. when my grandfather and, like I said, the previous owners of the home they my they worked with my grandfather to build the carport. Gotcha. Um, there's also a carport on her side that was put up on the on her house as, as well. At the zero so, set point as well. I'm sorry. At a zero set at a zero point I mean, property on the other. It's on the other side of the house. Right. I'm not sure. It, I've got pictures here if you would like those. Well, yeah, we would, but yeah. can you pass them over here? Yeah. But when did you put your shed in? Uh, shed's been there a good 30 years, I want to say late 90s. I, and I don't want to ask you more questions. It's in an odd place. Yeah, the shed was there first. <laughs> okay. Uh, in, in my opinion, just again looking at it, it looks like the the building or your uh, carport is supported by steel poles. Correct. So it's it's not even a wall. No. It's just steel poles. Yes, that's correct. And the water that would fall, it looks like it's going to fall directly down on her side of the fence even. It's actually coming, when it rains, it actually comes straight down on my side of the fence. Yeah. Um, and since she now has that concrete there and she's done the concrete where it kind of bees in and there's a metal drain that goes through here, through the middle of the concrete, so everything drains down from her house and from my aunt's house. And then there's piping that goes out to the road. Right. Is there a specific accommodation um, because of accessibility issues or? Yes, my aunt has numerous health issues, um, which I've got documented in um, 
sign from her doctor and everything. Um, she's got mobility issues, breathing issues, cardiac problems. Um, from her back door to where she pulls into the carport, she has maybe about five feet. Once she gets in the house, she's there. Um, so that's the biggest, the biggest thing is, is her health issues. Yeah, it seems like they would need permission from you to paint their fence. But the fence is actually mine's fence. It's your oh. It is our fence, yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. So the fence, the carport, the fence and the carport both belong to mine. Okay. Do we have anybody here that wants to speak about this application? Please come. I have not been sworn. Okay. I would pay Williams with the South Linden Area Commission. Do you promise that this testimony you give tonight be the truth and with the truth, please say I do? I do. Okay. Okay. Um, just wanted to share that the commission was a little reluctant in order to issue that uh, recommendation for disapproval, which is one we wanted to be consistent with how the board typically um, rules because we had experienced well, one resident had a carport and it ended up where we needed to have them tear that carport down. Okay. Um, we did, the committee did a site visit and we saw that there was, while there's a backyard, there's rear and there's access to the alley, there's no access to get inside of the, on, onto the property because all the property, uh, you know, about four houses is all kind of fit the ten, and it would uh, cause a hardship on this resident to try to build, you know, to go through the expense to tear down the fence, build a uh, car, a pad, concrete pad, in order to be able to bring her car in closer. But the way the homes were built back in 2008, um, there's, it was 1950, there's no back entrance. All the entrances are side entrances. And so this carport really supports, you know, the health issues that she only has to get out of the car and step, you know, about five feet, four steps to have access to her home. And uh, our, like I said, we just was being consistent what the board normally rules, um, but we did have a question with regards to uh, possible damage on the neighbor's property, but that has been satisfied. So. Okay. okay, thank you. If I may, um, I believe that previous case that you're referring to, I believe there's parking, they were parking in the yard, and yes, that was the is. issue right. that kind of distinguished. And, and we weren't aware, right, right. and we weren't aware. <laughs> They were doing that and, and actually had access to their reef. But this one, so when we did our site visit on this, we saw that the resident really does not have easy access to the rear part of that. Yep, I just want to know there's different yeah. access of all three different New, these are all new. <laughs> wow, that was a good Yeah. Okay. Anybody else wants to speak about the application? Do we have any questions from the board? Yeah. Um, Madam Chair, I do want to add, I did speak to the plan examiners about this being a uh, zero foot side yard. There's no issue for fire rating based on the material. Uh, so I don't really think there's a safety issue. Okay. Again, staff, it's, it's just simply uh, being consistent. So if that helps, you know, sway you to the approval, we're yeah. fine with that. But so there's no safety issues, fire rated, it's, it's a matter of. No, I think we've, in similar cases like this, we have ruled for um, a variation based on. Um, Accessibility. Okay. Um, I remember the turn in one where we had um, making an accommodation for a homeowner that needed accessibility. So, Peggy, you can take that back to your committee as well. Um, everybody call questions? I'll call the question. Questions been called. Please call the roll. Mr. Jones? Um, I'm going to say yes. And, and again, to piggyback on what the chair said, we looking at this. There's it does not cause an impediment or challenge for your neighbor. I would say that you may actually have a challenge because your rainwater is going down the side of her foundation hitting that driveway. So if it's not sealed properly, yes, like I've had that it outside her door. Yes, I had all that checked out and everything. I do I have a someone comes out to their home and checks each year for the insurance purposes to be sure foundation everything is all okay. correct. So so I'm a yes. Mr. Marco? 
Yes. Ms. Eagleball? Yes. Chair Farm Bailey? Yes. Bears Granite? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 750 South 17th Street. These are for this kind of application. Um, thank you. Uh, my name is my name is Jeff Day and I have been sworn in. Huh? 750 South 17th Street is located on the east side of South 17th Street, approximately 50 feet north of East Sycamore Street. It's zoned R2F residential districts and is located in the Columbus South Side Area Commission. It is 0 0.08 acre size, currently developed with a single unit dwelling and a detached garage. Surrounding uses are all residential, with the majority being single unit dwellings and two vacant parcels directly to the south. The applicant proposes to repair and renovate the existing structure, including a two-story addition to the rear of the primary structure and a worktop space above the existing detached garage. The requested variances are to reduce number of minimum required off-street parking spaces from two to one, which is an existing condition, to reduce the minimum required side yard from three feet to two feet eight inches along the northern property line and one foot two inches on the southern property line Again, existing conditions and to increase the maximum permitted height of the detached garage from 15 feet to 21 feet. Planning states that the Columbus citywide planning policies recommends preservation of historic building, the use of high quality materials, and that new construction be compatible with the principal and nearby structures, as well as trees and preservation of spur trees where possible. The proposal is consistent with these recommendations. The Division of Traffic Management has no comments. Columbus Southside Area Commission recommends approval of the requested variance. Staff can recommend approval of the requested variances because two of which will bring existing conditions into compliance. And then the variances will allow the applicant to make improvements to property while preserving the existing structures. Staff is requesting a uh, condition that uh, the elevations will be stamped to ensure the roof pitch of the proposed garage matches that of the dwelling. Okay, sorry, I had a question. Is the garage already there? The garage, you can see that that garage is already there. Right. It just increased in the It's height. a single story garage. Okay. I'd like to put a second floor on it. Okay. Um, the roof pitches that I provide, I'm keeping on the street face, I'm keeping the existing roof pitch back. I'm to, sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Um, on the street face, I'm keeping the existing roof pitch back to beyond the chimney. But beyond that, I'd like to shallow out the south side roof pitch to 712 uh, to put solar on it. And that's true for the okay. that's true for the addition as well as the garage. Well, the house too. And I put yeah, yeah, there's a little but there's a bump up on the house as well. You, these are the final drawings that you're ready for the stamp stamp tonight. Um, yeah. Okay. Are you sure? Um, <laughs> I mean, you just sound. I mean, I'd rather you look at it again just to make sure. That's right. Yeah. Um, it's here. I mean, we, whatever you yeah. turned into the office is what we're talking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there anybody here that wants to speak about this application? Board members, do we have any other questions? I'll call the question. Question has been called. Please call the roll. Mr. Malcolm? Yes. Ms. Egelhoff? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Chair Farmdale? Yes. Parents is granted. Thank you. 391 Seabrook Street. Three ninety one Seward Street is located on the south side of Seward Street, approximately three hundred fifty feet east of Brook Street. It is zoned R two F residential. It's located in Columbus South Side Area Commission. 
the uh, 0.15 acre site is currently developed with a single unit dwelling with a detached garage. Trying uses are primarily single unit dwellings with an elementary school to the north. The applicant proposes to split the lot to allow construction of a new single unit dwelling to front on Zephyr Street and requesting variances to reduce the minimum required lot width from 50 feet to 36.45 feet for both lots to reduce the minimum required lot area from 6,000 square feet to 3,280 square feet for both lots to reduce the required clear vision triangle from 10 by 10 feet to 8 by 8 feet for 391 Seaver to reduce the front building setback from 10 feet to 8 feet for 391 Seaver uh, to reduce the minimum required required minimum side yard from 3 feet to 0 feet for 391 Seaver to allow a dwelling to front on an alley for the Zimper Street lot and to allow a parking pad to be located in a side yard for the Zimper Street lot. Planning supports the proposal as it is consistent with the South Side Plan and uh, Columbus Citywide Planning Policies Design Guidelines. The Division of Traffic Management had no comments. And Columbus South Side Area Commission recommends approval of the request of variances. Staff can recommend approval of the request of variances since they will allow the lot to be developed in a mindful way and the proposed project is consistent with area citywide plan data guidelines. Can you state your name as one you were sworn in, please? Uriah Martin. Yes, I was. Kevin okay. Butch. Yes, I was. Okay. Uh, do you have anything else to add to this application? Um, I'll just add that the parking on the side of the house is a pattern in the neighborhood and would preserve the rear yard basically for our enjoyment. And then the design of the house is a very modest design with two bedrooms, two bathrooms, which fits into the streetscape. Okay. I was just trying to read your statement of hardship here. I thought, what's the hardship? So that's an existing condition. I believe just that the, the lot is smaller than it will be smaller than this. Yeah. The variance will make that lot size smaller than code, than code but it is still consistent with the neighborhood. You mean this, the lot split would make the lot? Split. Yes, it, of the existing house. Are there other houses on Zimper Street that the house face in the alley? Yeah, the one right next door, you can see it in the picture with the garage. Yeah, yeah. Would go with the yeah we're really yeah. one of the only lots in the area that doesn't have a lot in both Zimper and Seaver. You can see in the one of the drawings it right With across the garage. Right you can see, and they're all honestly, if you get there's yeah, the yeah, there's so so yeah. And those empty lots there in that picture are now on those. Yeah. 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 Is there anybody here to speak about this application? Board members, do we have any other questions? Call a question. Questions have been called. Please call the roll. Ms. Inbelong? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Malaka? Yes. Chair Vaughn Bailey? No, your variance is passed though. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 811 Lock Avenue. Eight Eleven Lock Avenue is located on the south side of Lock Avenue, approximately 600 feet east of Eagle Avenue. It is part of the R South Columbus Area Commission, and existing zoning is R2 Residential District. The 0.16 acre site is currently developed with a single unit dwelling. Surrounding units include similar single unit dwellings to the north, south, east, and west. The applicant proposes to construct a detached garage and is requesting a variance to increase the maximum allowable lot area devoted to a detached garage from 720 square feet to 900 square feet. Columbus Citywide Planning Policies uh, design guidelines state that the design and character of new development, including garages, should be appropriate and based on the principal and nearby structures, and that accessory buildings should be located to the rear of the principal building. That would be planning's comments on this proposal. 
And uh, traffic's uh, comments were that with the revised site plan showing the existing gravel driveway, uh, which would have been here, uh, to be paved, the all division of traffic management comments have thus been resolved. Uh, also, the Far South Columbus Area Commission recommends approval of this request. However, the uh, City Department's recommendation is of disapproval. A uh, reason being is that uh, as the square footage of the garage exceeds that of the primary structure, in such cases, staff consistently recommends disapproval. Uh, staff also notes that the board has previously disapproved of a similar request at 897 Block Avenue, which was case BZA 22 166 on similar grounds. Um, and while I'm on that note, the uh, earlier case, uh, case number two today, was a rehearing of BZA 22 166, which we didn't have at the end with the board's um, permission there. And they are back because they have reduced the square footage of their proposal to be co compliant with the 720 chair. What's the size of the existing structure? Existing structure is right around 900 as well. It's similar to the uh, to the um, to the structure in the other case at 897 Block Avenue. It's a similar okay. build, similar construction, and a similar proposal, ironically, for the garage as well. Okay. Question. I'm sorry. Okay. For staff, really quick. That mm -hmm. front that front patio looks pretty significant. When you put your eyes on the case, do you look at everything? Because I know we have a green space thing too. Yard our lot coverage. In terms of lot coverage, right? Uh, so you're asking, uh, would that patio count as? Yeah, I see. I see. It, it didn't rise to the occasion to warn a variance. As we don't know the mats on it. Okay. Okay. Can you state your name, sir, and whether or not you're sworn in? Luis Martinez. I've not been sworn in. Okay. Can you raise your right hand? You promised the testimony you give tonight to be the truth. That is true. Please state I do. I do. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you've heard, if you caught the gist of what staff is saying, is that we usually don't allow garages to be bigger than the dwelling. And so, as is, we would be looking to disallow this. Do you have an opportunity to increase the dwelling or decrease, decrease the garage? So uh, part of the reason why um, we're going the variance route is because uh, so this is a, a primarily Spanish speaking community and uh, uh, a lot of the homeowners that are just Spanish speaking, they know how to build pretty good, but they don't know the paperwork side of things. Um, so they started building this, they poured the foundation, they poured the slab as you can see there on the picture. and. Um, we just wanted to try to see if we could uh, get this variance approved to, to not have to go in and demo what's what's already been uh, built. Uh, this was a, a result of them working without a permit too. So the slab is for the garage or for the? the for no, in the back, sorry. Oh, okay. uh, it's it's part, very bad. You can see slab. a fan back okay. there, yeah. Okay. That's a chin okay. I have a question for staff. So I can we see the slab in the back? Here's an idea I just had. Mm -hmm. If he reduces the size of the garage, and uses the the let's just say five feet by so many feet on the uh, front of the garage is like a covered patio that the structure itself the footprint of the building would be smaller it would be all inclusive Even patio attack it's, it'd be the same as if you had a garage and a carport that would be total square footage. And I, I think that issue also came up in the previous case eight, at 897 Lock Avenue because they had a, an area that was also uh, covered by an overhang. We, we counted that as part of the uh, uh, yeah, square footage, unfortunately, for the garage. Good thought, though. <laughs> so, yeah, so we would need you to be reducing the size of the garage. Is that possible at this point? Uh, yeah, luckily they haven't built anything yet, so right. they'll simply go in and demo it. Yeah. No, I mean, we. I don't think you have to demo the slab. No, no, I'm talking about in the back. What's already yeah. started? Yeah. No, you would have to. I don't. I don't know where it's been started, but I don't think you would have to demo the slab. We're just saying the the total size of it could not be bigger than the house. Yeah, and, and what they have are there already. So for the garage, they already excavated and poured the foundation and the slab. Yeah. Not not talking about the one in the front. So to bring it down to to the. Um, was a 700 square feet or something like that. Yeah, yes, we just have to reduce the, what's already there. 
Okay. Um, so I think we would be voting to this a disallow this variance. Yeah, so we need to vote now. Okay. Is there anybody here that wants to speak about this application? I read a question. I call a question. Question to call oh, the call. I got it. Mr. Jones? No. Uh, Mr. Malaka? No. Ms. Ebohoff? No. Mayor Paul Ruby? No, variance is not approved. So, again, feedback for him. If he didn't have the overhang and it was just a patio, he could be fine. So, you don't have to necessarily demo the additional portion of the slab, right. just build a smaller garage itself. So, they'll have a patio that's attached to their. Yeah, it's monolithic. So, they'd have the form of the back. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, five Merritt Street. Yeah. All right. Five Merritt Street is located on the southwest corner of Merritt Street and South Pearl Street. This is part of the Columbus Southside Area Commission and existing zoning is M of Manufacturing District. Oh, yeah. The 0.31 acre site is currently developed with a warehouse. Surrounding uses include similar warehouses, eating and drinking establishments, and single unit and multi unit dwellings to the north. Similar warehouses to the east, a rail line, creative business park, and eating and drinking establishments to the south. And more warehouses, a rail line, and undeveloped land to the west. The applicant proposes to establish a fertilizer manufacturing business within the existing warehouse, which requires a federal permit. The applicant is also requesting a variance to reduce the residential buffer for the more objectionable use from 600 feet to 125 feet. And we'll go ahead and show a picture of that buffer here. So that would be the buffer that would be required. And that's just for residential parcels. And where I don't see the color code for residential. When do you get to residential? So these would be the residential parcels that fall within that 600 foot buffer. The one that are the ones that are highlighted in that blue color. Okay. Can you go back to your last thing again? Correct. I don't see it there. Yeah, that is from the auditor's site. It's difficult. Um, so there have been concerns uh, from the neighborhood in terms of the uh, potential for uh, public health impact. So we took the initiative to go ahead and reach out to our partners with Columbus uh, Department of Public Health, specifically their uh, Department of Environmental Health for comment. Their comments are as follows. Columbus Department of Health does not see an issue with this proposal. The operation would need a license through the Ohio Department of Agriculture, which I believe the applicant has already uh, um, uh, pursued and should be in the materials. Uh, and the area is well surrounded by manufacturing and a rail line. Assuming the operation remains the same in scope and scale, uh, the current facility in Canal Winchester, which is where this uh, business is currently operating, looks to be located around a mix of manufacturing and residential apartments are relatively close by. They are also operating out of a mixed use warehouse building. Planning supports the proposed location requirement request, but has no comment on the special permit request. The south side plan recommends a minimum buffer of 25 feet between industrial slash manufacturing and residential uses. Staff note there is a residential proposal, uh, Council Variance 22-104 to the southwest along South High Street. However, the existing adjacent roadway, uh, roadway viaduct and railroad provide a buffer between the site and the residential proposal. Additionally, staff note the existing manufacturing zoning in between the site and residential to the north, which is considered a mitigating factor. Neither the plan nor Columbus citywide planning policies address the matter of special permits, which is why they are not uh, commenting on these special permits specifically. Airport planning supports the location requirement request, but does not comment on the request for special permit. Uh, the Division of Traffic Management notes that a right of way dedication of 50 feet from the center line of South High Street will be required for uh, CCC 4309.17. And as far as I understand, the applicant has begun the process to request an exemption or has looked into uh, requesting an exemption to that requirement. 
We've looked at the exemption. We've also reached out to Mr. Moorhead and to see he had stated that it, since we're not making any changes to the existing use of the building, I mean, to, there are no changes to the structure of the building. And it states in the notes that, that could be deferred until um, final site compliance. Okay. All right. So moving on to city department's recommendation. Uh, the city department's recommendation is that of approval. Staff can recommend approval as the nature and intensity of this use are at a small enough scale so as to not pose any environmental health or nuisance concerns for the surrounding area. Furthermore, while there are residentially zoned parcels within the 600 foot buffer, which is necessitating the variance, staff's field investigation suggests that the majority of these parcels are either vacant or developed with uses other than residential. And we do have photographs of the, each of these parcels which we can go through now. So if you look on the right, this will show you where the picture vantage point was taken from, this green arrow here. And then the picture on the left is obviously the photograph of those parcels. So here we can see the uh, western end of these parcels. Um, we believe that this structure, according to the Area Commission, is being used for a commercial use. Moving on to the next picture. These residential lots are currently vacant. Another vantage point of the same block of lots. These residential lots are clearly being used for some sort of semi truck storage facility. Use. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it kind of hell's a coffin. So this this lot here, there are residential past it, but the only one that would be within the 600 foot buffer is this unused parcel here. Again, with these two currently undeveloped, if you go further out past the 600 foot, you do start to get into residential use. However, the ones that fall within the 600 foot buffer are currently um, not being utilized as residential in terms of use. These two, um, one of them does have a residential structure on it. From our field, field investigation, it was inconclusive whether somebody was living there currently or whether it was abandoned. There is a better picture later on where we can show you. But the uh, second one, the further north one, is abandoned. That is the structure that we were referring to. Uh, this is one of the uh, lots that does appear to have a an existing residential use. So this would be the uh, closest lot to us right now. And then the one to the south is on the corner here. I believe it also does have a house that is currently being used as residential. But all of those are beyond the 600 feet. Right? These two would be within the 600 feet. Okay. Um, this is another picture of that one house that was on this parcel right here. Again, we, it was inconclusive whether this was currently um, abandoned or whether it is whether it is currently being used as residential. Um, and then these two, this is the backyard of this house and then the backyard of this one as well. These two are the ones where we think uh, there is likely uh, a residential use there currently. And then this parcel here, obviously zoned residential, but it is currently being used for, you know, some sort of potentially warehouse storage, inconclusive, but not residential. What's the red zoning? Red zoning would be commercial. Okay. So you get the, you get a, as far as zoning is concerned, there is a healthy mix here. Thank you. So uh, we do uh, the city department's recommendation does. Uh, yeah, it does include some um, conditions here. So the special permit will be written specifically, quote, to allow for the manufacturing of organic granular fertilizer and organic slash inorganic briquettes and tablets, both of which using exclusively pre-processed materials. We included this language so as to hope to limit the ability for future tenants to expand this use from a small boutique operation to something larger. So this would sufficiently, in our opinion, hem that in to just this small use. We also are suggesting the following conditions. One, no storage of product or materials outside of the building will be permitted. Two, all operations will take place inside the building. The applicant may later look into uh, installing a prefab greenhouse of approximately 100 square feet, subject to any required city permits. Three, there may be temporary storage of equipment slash machinery outside of the building until it has been installed inside the building. And finally, four, the applicant shall take best measures to reduce the distribution of dust 
to the exterior of the building and will utilize a dust collector. As far as I understand, the applicant has agreed to all conditions. Chair. Okay. Can you state your names? What is your name sworn in? Beth Miller. Yes, I have sworn in. John Jordan. I have sworn in. James Lantry, owner, Rosie LLC. Sworn in. Were you sworn in? No. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you promise that the testimony you give tonight will be the truth? Nothing but the truth. Please state I do. I do. Okay. Who's going to speak? I want to be quiet. Good. Uh, on behalf, I'm Beth Miller, counsel for the applicant, John Jordan, who is a prospective tenant at the property at Rosie LLC by Merritt. Um, the applicant is agreeable to all of the conditions for the special permit to we understand the neighbor's concerns um, regarding manufacture of fertilizer. Just to be clear, these are all pre-processed granular dry products that are essentially mixed or pulverized together and formed into briquettes, which look like our tree spikes, as well as tablets for koi ponds or water product. This is not- What is the neighbor's concern? Um, they were concerned about, let's say, if there was gonna be any kind of chicken manure, there's not gonna be any unfreed and processed things, and also noxious smells is what they were concerned with, and also potential dust being emanated from the building or hazardous chemicals. But as this is not, I would say, people envision manufacturing of chemicals. This is more like ingredients coming together and being pulverized, mixed, and reshaped into briquettes and also tablets. We held a site visit of the current operation in Winchester, uh, Winchester Gardens and Canal Winchester. Um, it's an operation very small with five employees, members of the Southside Area Commission, also the Repo Sack, uh, Civic Association came out and viewed the current property location so they can actually see what is operating since it is a known business which wants to relocate here into Central Park. Okay. So what are you saying you're going to do about the dust? Um, the the hay has a large the applicant has a large dust collector. It's a large machine that attaches to the out, is on the outside of the building and goes into the building to collect um, any dust. It does what? It collects the dust. It, it's it's. If Mr. Jordan gets it, it, There's filters in it and it basically cleans the air. It's a vacuum? It, yeah, it's like a vacuum basically. But um, so whatever dust is in the air, um, it'll be more than sufficient to remove the particles. Even though well, we don't really, we make up dust, but it's really, it's just more of a safe keep. So just to clarify, we're not talking like composting, wind rolls, where you guys are turning organic material. This is all. Pre processed, you guys are just that is correct. Yes, yeah, so a big concern when people hear fertilizer, they think of like chicken manure, horse manure, that can, there's none of that. There's no composting, there's no raw material, there's um, only dried, like they stated, the uh, granular ingredients. Is, um, is there like an odor associated with any kind of that process or that when you're putting the material together? Very little. But so, what is it? What is the odor? Is it, it's not. What is the odor? Yeah, what would you compare it to? I would say when I, we went to the site visit, the individuals there stated it smelled like a normal warehouse. That kind of there's not like there's not like a manure smell. There's not like that. Strong I hear that. I hear that. But I mean, you're talking about pulverizing and uh, putting things together. Pulverizing. That, may I speak? As the owner of the building, I'm not taking a manufacturer. I'm taking a repackager. He gets all of his product. It's already manufactured from out of state. It comes in bulk sacks and he mixes it. That mixing, anytime he makes anything, you're going to get some amount of dust. So not a lot. I've seen his operation. Um, there's, it's all non-volatile. There's no chemicals. He's not cooking. So when you say the neighborhood is afraid of the word manufacturing, he's not manufacturing. He's mixing. He's repackaging substances to a recipe and in that repackaging there is minimal dust um i've stuck my finger in the bag of the stuff and taste it I'll tastes like crap well it, but it's it, not it, it, food in ag grade so i mean it, it is well. in a lot of foods that we actually consume i'm sorry did you sorry i can't eat both at the same time Apologies. okay sorry jim it's, it's, it's when the question was asked, 
the, the fear that the neighborhood has rightfully is when you say manufacturing of fertilizer, that brings in a really big world that he's not doing. He's repackaging. I, as an owner, do not want a quote manufacturing facility. A repackaging facility is a wonderful thing. Well, manufacturing is permitted. That's the that's yes. the purpose of yes. Business. It's uh, the current site is uh, a recycling plant is what it was before I got it. Okay. Anything else you want to add? No. Uh, the ingredients I do use is ag and food grade, and uh, the primary ones are in foods. Just to let you know. And how long does the products like sit in your warehouse before they are kind of? It's pretty the much turnkey. Okay. Um, what did you say? I'm sorry. It's turnkey. Like we'll 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 bring some product in and we'll produce it, but we're selling it at the same time since we could we sell direct to customer, so we sell all over United States and Canada, and uh, so we we really manufacture almost to orders right now. It's in, when the high season comes is when we have to get our efficiencies uh, much better. Okay. But the the building leads that opportunity for us to um, get better with that. Okay. Are you doing retail out of the building too? No. Okay. I think I know the answer to this question, but is there anybody <laughs> here that wants to speak about this application? So how about we do this? How about the three of you all move out and we have these seats available for the neighbors that want to speak so that they can come up, they can be ready, they can sign their names on the sheet. And um, we can hear from everyone. We will allow everyone to speak. You have three minutes. Please move, three of you guys. Um, we will allow everybody to speak. Um, you have three minutes to state your positions. Um, if we ask you questions, we don't take that away from your time. If you feel like somebody has made the point that you want to make, and you think your three minutes is better served making a different point, we advise you to do that. Whoever wants to come first can come on up. Uh, I have included a package that you've just received of the emails that we have received from uh, other residents who could not make it today. Um, if the next person that's gonna speak can go ahead and come to the chair and get their name signed on the sheet so we can just continue. Okay, sir, go ahead, state your name and whether you were sworn in. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Chair Small, and I have been sworn in. Okay. Thank you again, members of the BZA. Thank you as well. My name is Jared Small, and I was on East Hinman Avenue, not far from the property at Five Merritt Street. I rise to urge you all to vote no on the special permit request at Five Merritt to establish a fertilizer plant, 145 feet from urban residential housing. I'll say that again. Vote no for a fertilizer plant. That would be 145 feet from people's houses. I won't take my time to explain the environmental noise and other quality of life impacts this plan would have. You already know them. Well, I think we don't know them, so I think you should. We've heard dust. You talked, we talked about uh, storage outside, noise, manufacturing machinery. So we, we, we we're not permitting storage outside. It's in the special request that, that there would be some temporary storage. No, the one the condition was actually that uh, there would be no storage of product or materials outside of the building. In the greenhouse? The greenhouse, uh, let's see. Applicant may later look into installing a prefab greenhouse of approximately 100 square feet, subject to uh, any required permits with another condition. But um, yeah, number two was all operations will take place inside the building. May I continue, Madam yes, Chair? I, no, I just want you to make sure we sure. don't don't assume that we know what the issues are because we haven't been in meetings. This is the first time we're hearing this. My so, apologies. You know, we need to hear kind of what your concerns are. Sure, I appreciate that. Thanks. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard of the West Texas explosion of the fertilizer plant, but let me tell you what it was. Uh, this uh, in the in the first century in the city of West Texas, a fertilizer plant exploded and killed 15 people. 
What were they fertilizing? What were they making? What were they manufacturing? I'm not certain. I can't speak to that, but I can speak to that. Um, so there have been issues in the past with fertilizer plants that specifically use ammonium nitrate and other ammonium salt. It's a strong oxidizer, and when mixed with a propellant such as any sort of flammable material, it can become a hazard. However, we have worked with the uh, applicants, and he does not work with any sort of ammonium, uh, ammonium nitrate, ammonium sulfate, any ammonium salts. We can even write that into the conditions if the board should so decide that uh, this special permit will not allow using any ammonium nitrate or ammonium salts. I like that ammonium. What, how we're, what, what are we calling it? Ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate is compound, correct? Yeah, I think we need to limit the language as much as we can if we're, you know, talk about pre process, so similar to like ingredients and for future operators. If the board's amenable, I will, I will add that language. No, sorry. May I continue, Madam Chair? Yes, please. A similar as we have in Winston Salem, North Carolina, less than one year ago, that full sea evacuation for residents within a one mile radius could be fertilizer plant for several days. People were displaced from their houses for several days. Same issue, ammonium nitrate? Certain of that. I'm sure the struggle of disinvestment, the disenfranchisement, and discrimination brought by the city about the south side and specifically the Rainbow well Sex to Village neighborhoods, this plan would call home. There's a history of discrimination, and I think we all know that on the south side. You're being asked to vote on whether you approve the Surrey and Grimmers plant 145 feet from some of the densest neighborhood housing stock this city has to offer. Please vote no. There are only so many places of residents on the south side can tell you where the short side of a bad, potentially dangerous vote that this could be. You might take the south side area commission vote to recommend approval, which I believe they have. Is that correct? We are recommending approval. Uh, of the special south permit. Side. Uh, south side is also recommending approval. Right. I do you want to take that as approval by the community of this? The community does not approve this. In fact, the Rainbow Sex Village Civic Associated voted no on this. Who would vote no? The Rainbow Sex Steel Village Civic Association, no the Civic Association unanimously voting no on the permit. The South Side Area Commission would it's recommend with the special conditions attached. That never went back to the Civic Association. Are you a part of the South Side Area Commission? Not, no, but I do live on the South Side. How close do you live to this plant? About seven streets north. So not in the 600 feet either. No, not quite. But there are certainly many folks who do that and are not here with them and speak on behalf of. Okay, you, and you had looked in question about the Winston-Salem. It was also ammonium nitrate. I don't know. I can't speak. I'm telling you. Oh, okay. Could you, sorry, could you say that again? It was? It was. Okay. May I continue? Yes, please. Okay. The proposed restrictions approved by the South Side Area Commission, some more recent language was drafted, including that, and I quote, the initial best measures to reduce the distribution of dust to the extent of the building we lift the dust up as we work today. The most I'm still looking at is that the applicant shall take best measures to reduce the distribution of dust. The applicant is taking best measures. We'll go into the house. The restriction is laughable and insulting to the residents of the south side, where you're entrusting the health and safety of thousands of people into the hands of a single business owner who resides in Upper Arlington and just wants to live closer to his business. Madam Chair and members of the BZA, I urge you for these reasons and so many more about now on this special permit. Thank you for your time. Okay. Next person can come up. Go ahead, sir. State your name, whether you were sworn in. Hi, my name is Steve David, and I've been sworn in. Uh, so I'd like to echo, um, well, I'd first like to thank Mr. Kirk for his guidance on, um, on letting us know that we're able to testify today. We received uh, some complaints from the things in council, so so gracious uh, for him doing so. Um, I want to, to echo that for me, I'm, I'm a resident of Marion Village. Um, I'm three quarters of a mile uh, from the, this fertilizer plant here. I'm a social worker. My kids are going to be going to Southwood for kindergarten. So I'm, I'm vested in this neighborhood. Um, for me, this is fundamentally a democracy issue. The, the Civic Association unanimously voted no on this variance. The Marion Village Civic Association unanimously voted to support the repo sex of it. So the vote is a what? We vote, we um, submitted a letter in, in support of the repo sex of association's vote on it. So both of the, the closest. Yeah, I don't understand what you're saying. The repo read? 
repost that. Oh, repost that. Yes, it's a neighborhood. That's the neighborhood. Steelton repost that is the Civic Association. Thank you. The Civic Association, where it's located, voted unanimously to reject these variances. My Civic Association in the neighbor in the neighborhood just north of that, we voted unanimously to support what those local folks asked for their community. So the the Southside Area Commission had a split vote on this that was notably split along the lines of folks who were living further north from this community that was going to be the buffer for theirs. So fundamentally, this is a democracy issue. Like the other speaker did mention how we see this history of neighborhoods of color, of low-income people being the ones put next to these kind of businesses. And so we think when the neighbors speak up that we should be listening to their voices in this instance. The other thing, the other thing I'll say, because I know we have multiple speakers today, is when the applicant approved, uh, appeared before the Southside Area Commission, he was asked, why are you coming to the South End? And he said this thing about that, you know, he's, he wants to be closer to work. Um, and he was asked, like, well, you know, in your plans to expand, would you hire local residents? And he said, yes, I would, but I don't hire lazy people, which tells you everything you need to know about this application. This is someone who's going to put his business in a place that he feels is a throwaway neighborhood, and we were about to let him do so. And so I would urge that you table this request, please. I'm happy to answer any questions. I do have a question for you. So, Southside Area Commission, are you a part of that? No, I'm not an area commissioner, no. No, I'm not a commissioner, but are you invited to their meetings? Do you participate in their meetings? Yes, ma'am. I was actually, I was doing the child care that day. My wife was the one at the area commission. That's fine. Yeah. So how many understand you know what the vote was? I, I want to say it was seven to three, seven to four. I mean, I don't know. Six, three, one. Six, okay. Okay. Is Thank there anybody you. here? Thank Let me ask this question. Is there anybody here from the South Side Area Commission? Yes. Okay. I'm not going to call you yet, but I just need to make sure before I, I won't ask them to speak if you're here. Okay. So my question is, why do you say it was a split decision? Help me understand that. So I think the number of the things that were brought about, you know, the the tour of the site, you know, and whether or not like this is going to be a true environment environmental hazard to the neighborhood. I think that some folks were convinced by this tour that they had gone on and they had seen the site that they thought the appropriate um, measures have been taken. And you don't believe them? So uh, for me, like, fun, this is, I'm, I'm not, like, I'm not an environmental scientist. I'm not here to, to talk about, like, dust or compounds or whatnot. Okay. I think that when the neighbors say that we do not want this business here, that we should have structures in place that honor their voices, especially something when the, the other piece of context that I feel is important here is there is, there's a lot of housing development going into this area now. There's a thousand residential units being planned for the Steelton Village development. So, whereas the sites that we currently see on this, many are, are not occupied. If you spend any time on the south side, like, there are multiple housing projects, both market rate and affordable housing that is being planned in this immediate vicinity. Mm -hmm. So, the past in the, of this area does not have to be where it is going. It is not the future of it. Like, these are not the kind of businesses we need to be allowing into this area. It's but, this is, but this area, this site is manufacturing. So, so it would not it would not be slotted for residential development as you speak of. Yes, ma'am. But the um, this large green tranche, like just yeah, over there, like that is being rezoned to residential for like a thousand unit housing development that's happening. This is the future of South. There's a metro park going in further south. There is an entertainment venue. There's going to be like more river access. Like this is an area where people want to go. And this is an opportunity for us to chart the future of what happens in South Columbus, rather than let Upper Arlington business owners come and and dump their pollution there. For context, uh, this is what planning was referring to in Council Variance Case 22-104. It's um, an expansion of the fort. The fort is a makerspace here, and they're expanding on mixed use in these parcels here. We do actually have um. The Frank Row right there. Um. What? Uh, one four, you said? No. One four, yeah. 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 So, uh, and we actually did receive, it was a little last minute, it was right before the uh, uh, meeting started, but we did receive material from uh, one of the developers for that project. Uh, if we have some renderings, I don't know if that's something that is pertinent or if you want to see it, but we have it in case you do. Was he speaking on this case or just providing information? He was providing information and he included an email. If it should be in there, it's a Kyle, uh, they're alphabetical, so the person would be Kyle. So one thing I'll, I'll say uh, as you guys continue, you have very valid points. We are governed by another set of uh, guidelines, if you will, on how we evaluate this. And if you can't tell, we're doing everything we can to create protections for you all. 
but we have to protect both parties. You have a manufacturing district, as the chairwoman had explained, we can't change that, but we can do everything we can to make sure that there is no objectionable, more objectionable use in that space than needs to be. And so that you guys are protected. And you could you go ahead. Yeah, we really appreciate like the care and concern that's being into like these additional measures. And like we and we see that happening. What I will say though is like you do not have to grant this variance. The the existing code is not within 600 feet. You do not have to let it get closer. So whereas both parties here, you know, there's a balance between both parties that you don't have to let them be closer to residential units. What I was describing to you is the set of standards that we have to make a decision based on. And even if we were so sympathetic with your side that we said no, if we don't really balance those both interests, it could be overturned in court anyway. So, you know, we're just trying to do the right thing, get as much information as we can in this moment to make the best decision for everybody. And again, we appreciate the deliberation of the time that's been taken with this, the fact that like folks have been corresponding with us to let us know that we can come. Um, I do think, you know, the fort was mentioned, like I was with my family at a festival that the fort had the other day. Like, the, again, I, I think a piece of this to consider is what is the future of this neighborhood? The city of Columbus is undergoing this citywide rezoning process to try and address some of these long-standing racial inequities that have characterized what gets built where. And so at this moment, when we are undertaking the citywide rezoning process, where there's all of the, these other housing developments coming in, in my view, there is no reason to allow them to be closer to existing residential units than the code currently allows. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Oh, it's almost exactly three months. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whoever's next, see. Uh, uh, hi. No, I see you. Uh, you're next, but I'm saying who's next after you. Come on up. Okay. Hi, my name is Holly Hahn. I'm a resident. I live about a quarter mile from there, 24 miles. Um, I have a couple points to make. Uh, as far as your your criteria um it is not uh, wanted by the neighbors at all the applicant has up until now not been willing to make any legal promises about the scope of the business it is not consistent with where the future of the south side is going um and and it is not, there's no need for this business in the South Side. I kind of want to bring a little bit more attention to how this was presented at the meeting. This gentleman has no, he has expressed no interest in hiring lazy South Side people. He has the, the property owner, who, if I'm not mistaken, has been dinged quite a few times on his property for uh, issues, 311 issues, coding issues, junk, things like that. Um, th these are not good neighbors to us. We don't want them in our neighborhood. They don't want to bring jobs. They have no interest in anything. They think they came to the meeting and said something like, well, at least it's not drugs and hookers. At this meeting, like that's not the South Side. We love our neighborhood. And you can look at those pictures and you can see Maybe there's a resident there. Yes, of course there's a resident there. They might not have answered the door to the people that came knocking to talk to them, but of course there are residents there. If you're just to interject, if we're referring to this house here, the reason we made that determination was there was no door on the uh, door right there. There seemed to be no furniture appearing in. It looked pretty abandoned. Okay, that's fair. Nevertheless, there is so much potential in this neighborhood. There are so much, there are so many new homeowners in this neighborhood. There are so many new kids playing in the street in this neighborhood. This South Side neighborhood is not a road away. We love our neighborhood. We want, we, we don't, you don't need to shrink the amount of, we have zoning for a reason, right? He's asking for a special exception. If it's within zoning, it's within zoning. But I really don't think 
that someone with such utter contempt for the South Side in a potentially dangerous business with dust and the noise. No one has ever mentioned anything about what kind of noise is going to happen. The people who toured the, 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 the plant, as far as I know, toured it when it was not in operation. Toured it when it was shut down, not working. So we don't have any guarantee. We have a person that we, we have asked, what kind of, what can you bring to the South Side community? Do you want to be a part of South Side community? He says, well, maybe I'll put a mural up. No jobs. So question for you, do you, it is, is your belief that there's going to be noise emanating from inside the building that you can hear outside? We don't, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know anything about that. So, ladies and gentlemen of the board, if you can, if, if you must, if you feel like you need to vote yes on this for financial reasons or, or city code reasons, I mean, like, tax base, I don't, I'm not sure, like, the, the, the the, the rules and regulations. Can we just have an environmental study ordered? What would the what what are you asking for an environment? I, I would like to know what the noise level is going to be like. I, I, I hear that they they committed actually legally to do the, the dust collecting, which before they had not. But I, I I really don't think that we know enough about this business. If you can't bring yourself to vote no, as is the will of the people who live there then please just let's table this until we have some more time. The other two issues I want to bring up real quick. The electrical grid on the south side is extremely fragile. We get, we get does, I don't know if any of you city guys can speak to that more specifically than I can, I but we get power outages once a month in the summer when it storms. But, you know, so if he's got any safety systems, to you know the dust collectors the, any kind of systems like that what happens when the power goes down like if everything's going well i'm sure three minutes so. oh. if everything is going well sure it's <clears> safe <throat> what happens when the power goes out is this building is this business going to put too much of a strain in our already strained infrastructure we have a lot of reasons not just oh it's a fertilizer plant and we're dumb like there's a lot of reasons to object to this on well, for example, property values. Okay. As well as environmental reasons to object to this. And we as the South Side do not want this business in our neighborhood. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Real quick, just to clarify on the residential within 600 feet, that there are residences that we were able to confirm were currently used as residences okay. within 600 feet. Okay. Some, some were on, no, I got but that. some are terms. No, I got, I got that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just make sure. Okay. Ma'am, have you been sworn in? I have. Okay, go ahead and state your name for the record. Donna Bates. Okay, go ahead with your testimony. Um, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm here representing the Reed Pozak Stilton Village Civic. Our co-chair is with us in the audience. So we would like to tell you that the city of Columbus, as well as private investors, have and continue to invest in bringing affordable housing, and they continue to uh, work with property owners to upgrade that area of the city that has undergone great transition. <clears throat> Excuse me. The area in which the proposed business has been asked to relocate, uh, we think will require significant capital dollars because the building appears to be, because we have not been inside, appears to need significant work for the fertilizer owner operator to move in. That's only our observation because my understanding from the zoning committee uh, person who for two got out here with me, they were not allowed to visit inside the building to see its condition. So the, nearby there's a multi-tenant, which is the port operation, which is also providing significant capital dollars, bringing in not only affordable housing, retail, restaurant, uh, the city winery, it will all be in that area. So the, air, the, the issue of fertilizer plant um, was a concern, simply the name itself. But our concern is that we don't want to be the first place that it occurs within the city of Columbus. Our understanding is there's no other fertilizer plant within city limits. And so we would encourage you to vote down for that reason. 
but as it relates to what you had listed in the variance in the city code section 316309, this location is near a large semi truck, not storage, but repair site. It has tires, oils, gasoline, other things that would be flammable. That along with a, of other things, including blocking the street that leads to the site of five merit. So for us, there's conflicting narrative. It's almost like somebody uh, is changing their job application because when we had our meeting and it was contentious, the owner operator of the proposed business told us he did not have a license and had not had a license to operate a plant in the state of Ohio since its inception. I understand from the commission meeting, he does now have one. The owner operator did not appear to adhere to our safety regulations, including with, with um, uh, PPE for the uh, employees, safety put, uh, posters. And at the time we were told that he used a fan to blow out the dust rather than having a dust collector. Um, the location chosen is one surrounded by business that threads vehicles and has a history of fires at that site. The location chosen is a building that by appearances did not seem to be in good repair. The information provided indicates that the variance would remain with the location. I know you've changed some things since we've been in this meeting uh, related to that, but given the opportunity that the next tenant might abuse anything that's written is concerning to us. The chosen location will be difficult for fire and safety personnel to access because the width of Pearl Street is very narrow. When the trucks park on 4th Street, you cannot make a turn onto Merritt, even in a large van. The chosen location is close to a viaduct where pedestrians will walk. If anything were to happen, any kind of fire, if it were even in the wintertime, um, static electricity can ignite anything at any time. There's no assurance that the owner operator of the proposed business will abide by any or all uh, requirements. We have no opportunity to say seven months down the road, a year down the road, that something is going wrong because we don't have any way to address the issue or rectify it. There's no assurance that the materials will be that will be used meet appropriate standards and or have been or will be randomly tested when they arrive on site. There's no assurance that any governmental authority will periodically visit the site to confirm that all regulations are being met. Ma'am. There is no assurance that the property owner or the owner operator will install and appropriate maintain equipment necessary to help your to help man safe. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm over. Yeah, you're over I'm, time and I let you go fast. So no um, problem. I think we heard your, I know we heard your testimony. Do we have any questions? My question. I, I would just say to you, your recourse is code enforcement. So we're putting some specific limitation text in place so that if you suspect something, code enforcement can certainly verify that they are within the confines of what we're, what we're establishing here. And I know it's to the city, but our time response with city code for minor things is delayed. So I, I, I do understand what you're saying and appreciate it, but our primary concern is even if we did a 311, even if we call it directly, we don't know what will happen because our, our time lag normally is over 60 days to get minor things done. Um, this is not to say, we don't want to say he should not have a business. We just don't think this is the appropriate site. For so with that in mind, where what is the appropriate site other than it would be outside the city of Columbus uh, limits, not within. But we not, have manufacturing districts within the city of Columbus for just that. I think because there was no license. To me, that's a trigger that if you don't have a license and you didn't know you needed a license, what other standards have you missed in order to provide safety for your employees? Because if you established a business, I don't know how long, I'm saying 20, I think he said more, and you didn't have a license then, 
it wasn't until he came to our meeting and we asked him, did he have one? Did he go out and apply to get one? You're talking about a license for the previous he did not. location? No, he okay. did not. Because okay, I see what you're it wasn't until recently that he got a license. With the Department of Agriculture? Yes, yes. And is my understanding that they're the oversight um, this type far, of operation? Yeah, so as far as our conversations with the uh, Department of Public Health, they identified two state agencies that would potentially have jurisdiction over oversight here. One would be Department of Agriculture, who licensed and uh, license, licensing and provides a check on fertilizer manufacturers. The other would be specific to the dust mitigation system. That would be Ohio EPA. Okay. So a couple. And, and I know I am only, but our, our biggest disappointment, which only lets us know that in our area we're disenfranchised, is that the civic voted no. The zoning committee of the commission voted no. But something happened in between, mm -hmm. and the commission voted yes. Okay, so we'll hear from that. We'll hear about that. Thank you. Okay, so state your name, whether you were sworn in. Hi, my name is Eric Bobbitt, and I was sworn in. Okay, go ahead. I live at um, on East Hinman Avenue as well, approximately seven blocks from the site. Um, I was a renter in the area. I do like the area so much that I bought the house across the street. Um, so uh, one question I had, the list of considerations you read was different from the list of considerations um, and what, what did you call it? Uh, uh, conditions. Conditions, thank you. That was presented to us at the meeting, the at the re meeting. The list of conditions provided to us said no use of raw or unprocessed manure of any type, chicken, cow, horse, et cetera. Is, is that on there? So that would be written into the, the language of the special permit. Um, am I what, to respond? Just making sure. I'm, yeah, okay. sorry. Okay, no, no problem. Um, yeah, so the uh, that would be covered with the language of the special permit itself, and the, the quote uh, quoted limitation text that we're going to use is to allow for the manufacturing of organic granular fertilizer one, and organic slash inorganic briquettes and tablets two. So those are two products, and the, here's the key part: both of which using exclusively reprocessed materials. So any sort of organic material, any sort of manure, that sort of thing, it has to be pre-processed off-site until before it gets to this location. So um, I, also in the list of conditions that was originally presented to us was no use of nitrates, explosive materials, insecticides, or herbicides. Um, that was not in your list of conditions. So that we are talking about uh, adding that saying no ammonium nitrate and sulfates. Right. I, I would request that you would add explosive materials, insecticides, herbicides. Uh, for, for the record, explosive material is already prohibited by City Columbus code in no. any district. Um, but what, what was the other one? Explosive, what else? Uh, insecticides or herbicides. Um, we can add that text if the applicant is amenable to it. Um, yeah. Um, any chicken letter, any chicken litter that will be used will be heat treated. Was one of them as well. That that would be the uh, pre-processed. That would be the pre-processed okay. materials. Um, it was called out specifically in that. So, um, and then hours of operation with running machinery or deliveries from seven a.m. to six p.m. We haven't talked about hours, so we have to ask about what they're. So, I, I want to provide this as context for what was presented to us then as part of his original. When by you, them. When by you, them. When yes. you say presented, you took the yeah. That was what you based your vote on. Yes. Okay. Um, and and I would request and you were part of what the I was at the reading process. And you process. and you guys voted no. Correct. Even with these conditions. Correct. Okay. Um, in uh, Mr. Jordan's application, it says um, part of the reason for variance. He says um, the landlord, uh, Mr. Landry, has indicated that he has had significant difficulty securing desirable tenants due to the location of the property and inability to secure a respective, respectable viable tenant can only be obviated with the variance. Um, I would suggest that Mr. Landry's business sense in purchasing a property is not a good reason for a variance. Um, additionally, uh, after that meeting, Mr. Landry addressed Ms. Hahn and I and said, um, if you think this is bad, I can find way worse, trust me, end quote. Um, what was, do you know what was operating in this building before? I'm not, I don't know. Um, 
Also in his application, uh, he uh, suggested it would be a perfect fit for the building location and would be an asset to the community. Um, the community would not suffer a detriment and the area would be enhanced. Um, we've heard nothing about how the area would be enhanced from this, not providing jobs, not really providing anything. When asked about this at that meeting, he said, um, I guess I could help with a garden or something. Um, and you've heard uh, testimony about his general attitude towards the area. So, um, in, so just so we're clear, sure. enhancing the neighborhood is not one of the requirements for. Sure, I'm, I'm, I'm just responding okay. to his original request. Okay. I, just wanted, I just didn't want that to yeah, absolutely. linger. Um, but you, you mentioned Columbus does have manufacturing um, zoning, and we understand that living in that area, there are a number of businesses right there. Um, those were pre-existing businesses when we moved in. This pre-existing zone as as uh, manufacturing, I don't think anybody's objecting to that. What we're objecting to is that 600 foot. Um, uh, but but on that point, sure. I don't think your testimony has spoken to what about this operation is causing you detriment because you're living within 600 feet of this particular operation sure so um i think when mr jordan uh referred to things as being food grade um i don't think he's misrepresenting the truth i think that's true but i think he's steering away from um other aspects of what makes that dangerous just because something is okay to taste doesn't mean it's okay to breathe in. Um, he were, he provided us with a list of um, safety data sheets for the materials that he uses. Um, at that meeting, he attested that it was an incomplete list. So I only have the ones that he provided. Um, so he provided chicken manure, um, which is listed as H232, harmful if inhaled. Uh, dolomitic limestone, um, H335 may cause respiratory ir irritation. H350 may cause cancer. H370 causes damage to organs. Uh, triple superphosphate, H318, causes serious eye damage. Um, in addition to those, uh, the chicken manure is combustible dust. So in any dust-based facility, you have uh, the danger of, um, you'll see this in sawmills, you'll see this in flower plants. Um, when dust, combustible dust mixes with air in the right quantities, it becomes uh, it becomes a danger for spontaneous combustion because the small spark can basically ignite that fuel to air mixture instantaneously. Um, so uh, all of those are are the ones we know of that he provided, um, and I'm not I'm not sure what the other ones are. I all I know is he said that was not a complete list that he provided. I mean, um, so those are are some of our specific concerns. Um, Okay. So, do you think that the dust collector, because of presumably these materials would come together to create these forms that they're describing, and there would be dust in the air? Sure. If it's vacuumed into this dust collector, that does everything you can possibly to mitigate, right? Uh, sure. It's it's a great safety step. I would I would suggest that um, most plants that deal with combustible dust also have these vacuum systems. And yet, <laughs> accidents happen, right? Um, so, um, uh, there was another talk too, and I can't remember. Oh, uh, so in in the Q and A that he he answered with the commission, he said he would provide a dust collector if necessary, um, and that language that was brought up specifically did call it out as a specific condition. Yes. It is. It is a condition. Okay. Yeah. We'll utilize a dust collector. That will be a condition. Okay. And so your time is up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Christine Davis. Have you been uh, sworn in? I have not. Okay. Can you raise your right hand? You promised the testimony you get tonight be the truth, nothing but the truth. Please say it, I do. I do. Go ahead. Okay. Um. I'm a resident in the Reeve Hozak Civic Association. I've lived there for 38 years and lived on the South Side for most of my life. We do have an objection with modifying the distance between, you know, this manufacturing facility and homes. The one 
that you cited as vacant. There have been a lot of such homes in our area which have been recently rehabilitated or even torn down and rebuilt for that matter. Um, that home, and then there is another home on the southeast corner of 4th Street, or close to it. Southeast corner. Uh, maybe on the other side of that. Oh, so it's it, the one that's closest. You saw uh, thought there was a commercial activity oh, going yes, on yes, yes. in there. To our knowledge, there is not. The house has been a rental property in the past. The owner has been just kind of sitting on it in his terms. Gotcha. Um, waiting for the market to be ripe for whatever. I don't, I'm not sure what he's waiting on. But one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is precedent. I don't believe that you know, allowing a fertilizer plant within the city limits sets a good precedent for our city. I don't think that reducing the zone between manufacturing and residential is a good precedent for our city. Then we have what the applicant applies for and what actually happens. I was here when I Schlesinger applied for their variance at 2040 Parsons Avenue. It was told to us that there were special conditions involved that the owner would have to take care of the shopping carts that were going to show up. And they assured us, oh yes, we'll have a space set aside for those. We were told that they were only going to take non-ferrous metals and no hazardous materials would be accepted there. Go there today. I live not even a quarter mile from there. There are stolen recycling containers and trash cans on the street. There are regularly shopping carts in the way. Schlesinger doesn't take them. And yes, they accept everything now. Code enforcement, yeah, they'll get to it eventually. And then it'll do it, they'll, you know, it'll just happen again. They haven't kept up the screening that they promised on their um, lot facing ours. It looked great in the beginning. It doesn't now. Ms. Gillum, I think you were here the night that I came down to talk about the variance that was requested by Phoenix Recycling. <laughs> Wonderful site plan. Wonderful site plan. None of it's been done. None of it. If you drive down Marion Road, you cannot see through the pallets to see if there is any clear fire lane. That was the site of the five alarm fire, remember? Remember I told you that man lied to you. You didn't believe me. I hope you will now. None of the screening on Ann Street that he promised exists. I drove by there today just to check. It's not there. And they can't keep their fence lines clean where we live. You know, the only trees that have happened, they promised to plant trees. The only trees that have come up are the trees of heaven that come up everywhere in the south end if you don't watch yourself. And they're growing right in that fence, along with the wild grapes and everything else that I can't find to personally pull out of there every spring because I do more work on that fence than they do. Ma'am, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. But I'm telling you, you have used precedent in this meeting in the Lock Avenue case. What will happen in the future? I tried. It's Monday, a little bit. Uh, I'm I sorry, ma'am. Can you hold the microphone? I can't hear you at all. Yes. Hello, my name is Lily Banner, and I'm the co chair of the Reed Post Exhibit. Also, a Columbus Outside uh, Commission, and I've been commissioned since we started in 2008. And I'm advocacy for my community and my people. And I'm here to say that I know that the yeah. residents. Yeah, ma'am, have you been sworn in? I was sworn in okay. when I first came. Go ahead. Thank you. And I represent. The community and I have heard all of the residents and everybody here tonight fertilizer and they said we do not want a fertilizer plant down here. We don't need it. And they know it's a condition and what's not of a fertilizer plant. So my 
peoples that are ethical and that both were made to contain the Columbus outside air commission, they oppose uh, the plan and their poses no. You were, so you are a member of the Southside Area Commission? I am. So you can explain then what happened between the zoning committee, I'm assuming of that commission voted no, then the full commission voted yes. On um, the, the zoning commission, I'm on the zoning. Okay. Yes, there was no, it was opposed, no. Was the you for the count that vote? I mean, Let's see, I was getting ready to go on vacation, and I believe that was like seven to three or two something. Six three one. Six three one. Of the zoning. The zoning committee voted against the permit zero. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, ma'am. I'll get. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll get the full testimony, but I'm asking about the zoning. Six okay. three one. Okay. And, and then the. The commission, when we did the uh, commission, I was not present at the commission. I was planning a trip to go to go to Hawaii on that okay. Wednesday, and the uh, commission was at Tuesday. I did not. Okay. I couldn't make that okay. meeting. So back to the zoning commission, the zoning committee, that vote was a no. Yes. And do you, do you remember why that vote was a no? It was no because of we, there was a... There was supposed to be another meeting. There was supposed to be a table and another meeting with words and the language supposed to be changed, but I don't think that that was done. If it was, I was not aware of it. Okay. And I believe it was done, but I still wasn't aware of the language condition that they voted on me. Okay. That was talked about. Okay. Do you have anything else to share? Um, Pretty much that's my share that I want to bring to the table that who I am and why I'm here. Thank those people who are standing belong, along beside me who uh, also support the proposal of the fertilizer plant. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sir, can you say your name whether or not you're sworn in? Uh, not this one. Okay, raise your right hand. You promise that the testimony you give tonight be the truth, nothing but the truth. Please state I do. I do. Okay. Your name is? My name is Johnny Davis. I was at the site hearing in Canal Winchester. Okay. And I was at the site at Five Merritt the day that we took the vote. I we it was a unanimous vote no at the site on that Saturday morning. At the same time, we voted on a 200 unit housing project to be diagonally across the street where this fertilizer plant's going uh, to be built. And, and you're a part of which association? I am with Rio Jose. Rio Jose, okay. And that's a 200 unit, and that is on a manufacturing property that got rezoned for residential use. Now, when I was down in Canal, If you're trying to find it, it'd be behind Dan's drive-in. Right okay, Barthen, 45 Barthen is the address. You can look up on Google Maps. It's the old side of Perm Creek. Now, I've been a resident down there since 1962. Oh, I'm going to consider it in that decision. All right. So, can you go back to the map? Oh, I'm sorry. Go oh, yeah, ahead. no, you're fine. No, I'm finishing this. I want to figure all So that's Barthman. Uh, we have a truck curse there. So there's no key. No, no, Zach and Barthman. Sorry, let me bring up the residential parcels. So the tr truck repair is on Hossack. It's across. Hossack and Forth. So yeah, it would be like. Uh, right. It's right. west of High Street. West of West, West of There you go, right there. Oh, yeah. okay. I know which project you're talking about. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. 200 unit, model three. It would be right around here. Is that the one you described earlier? No, this is a separate one. Oh, wow. There so are two. There's already one we have. It. What is the circle representing? This, that circle is the 600 okay. foot box. So we already have that tip of that project right there. Yeah. yeah. Then, yeah it's going to be right there. And then we have another, you're saying it, the, another project is in the rectangle one or the square? It's going to be pretty close to where his cursor if he goes up just a little bit right through there. Okay. 
and it's going to come down. The plan shows it stopping right behind Dan's Drive-In, which is a restaurant there. Okay. Now, so we approved that unanimously, and um, the parcel across POSAC was also approved for housing to be put on. The, pers the parcel at 4th in Hozak, it was beside the one residential, it was an empty lot, was run forth, and we approved it for housing. And now all of a sudden, these people are putting housing in it. They're not like they're moving beside a fertilizer plant. They're getting a fertilizer plant moving against them. That's always been my philosophy. If you move into a neighborhood and it's already got something existing, you knew it when you moved in. But when you live there and then something new gets put in, that's not right. You need to look at the whole big picture. Like I said, I've been here since 1961 on HOSAC. Moved there here next week will be 61 years. And I've seen this happening. Phoenix is a perfect example. Code enforcement EPA is a joke. I have called them. I've spent hours on the phone with them because of a silo they put 35 feet away from my property that produces dust and fumes. Nobody can do anything about it. Sarah at the health department can't do anything about it. Steve Dunbar hasn't been able to do anything about it. I've spent countless of times going to court, environmental court, over this. Nothing happens. Okay? It's up to us to police it. Code enforcement's not going to police it. Now, the big elephant in the room is right in the front of this building is a 40-some inch medium pressure gas main under the ground that nobody has talked about. Big gas main. Right there with the loading docks on. You know, and it's over 100 years old. It don't take a rocket science to figure out it ain't going to take too much to break it. If you have an explosion above it. Now, the chicken manure is explosive. It's in his data sheet. I passed it around at the zoning area commission. We got it shot. The going as long as we have grounded equipment, everything will be okay, but static doesn't necessarily have to come from electrical devices. It can come from everything else. Go pet your cat in the wintertime and see what happens. You know, it, it, you're going to light him up. When I was down there, I asked them about dust explosions, and they said that they don't feel, in their opinion, that it gets that big, but when it does, they just put a pedestal fan in the doorway and blow it out. I asked the guy about what? The the airplane. Airplane. Huh? What do they put in the doorway? A pedestal fan. Pedestal? Yeah, pedestal fan. And blow, his out, blow it out, thin out the building. Now, they had a dust collector down there, and they've been down there for years. I'm thinking five, if memory serves correctly. It's not hooked up. It's just sitting there. So... He don't even know what size it is. Don't even know if it's rated to be able to handle the dust that he does. Now, he does do processing there, manufacturing. He does grind up materials. It isn't everything coming in a la carte and a little bit of this, a little bit of that, like you do in your kitchen. No, he is grinding up materials. So. Okay. Thank you, sir. Your time is up. Yep. Did you sign in, sir? Yes. Sir, did you sign the sign in sheet? No, I did sign. Thank you. Oh. Okay, so I go state your name, whether you've been sworn in. Ted Welch, I have not been sworn in. Okay, can you raise your right hand? Is there anybody else here that has not been? I'm not waiting too late to ask this question. Is there anybody else here that has not been sworn in? Okay, please, just you, Mr. Welch. Can you raise your right hand? Yes, I will. Promise the testimony again tonight with the truth and nothing but the truth. Please state I do. I do. Thank you. Go ahead, the testimony. Okay. Um, I know you've asked some of the commissioners whether they were there at the commissioner's meeting. And of course, Lily Banner was not there. She had a planned vacation. A couple of other individuals were not able to be there either because of 
vacations who are a part of this civic vote. Can you please pull the microphone over for me? Okay. I, normally, I think my voice is loud enough. There we go. People are always telling me to shut up. <laughs> well, here's your chance. Pardon? Here's your chance. Yeah. For three minutes, though. Only for three minutes. I'm going to try. Yeah. I was there at the commission meeting. Uh, Jim Griffin, our chair, was there as well. Uh, the agenda came in, and uh, he was not aware that the five merit uh, was going to be on the meeting agenda that night. Uh, another individual. Uh, made up the agenda. And I asked Jim about it later. He says, I really didn't know that it was going to be on the meeting tonight. Um, and you may call him and ask him. Um, Catherine Call was there. She understood that as well. Um, when were you, are you, were you there? I was there. And you were a voting member. I'm a voting member. Okay. And uh, Commissioner of District Four. Okay. And so, what was the vote on that in that meeting? Uh, Catherine, uh, Kathy Green just gave you that information. Um, my of uh, the language that was rewritten was not available for the communities. It because was, it, you mean the conditions that we're talking the about? The issues we're talking about this evening. Okay. All of this was done after the community votes. Um, I found out later, Catherine Call uh, verified it for me. She assisted uh, some of the members of our commission along with the BZA, according to Anthony Celebrezzi, that it was a quick rewrite in order to get it. Now that's what Anthony's telling me, don't, don't, because I talked to him after this vote uh, at a uh, social gathering. Uh, yes, he said uh, they had come down to BZA. Yes, there was some rewriting of the language. But the, so but let me ask you this question. The conditions that are being recommended tonight seem to be more strict than the commission. I don't, that. I don't know because I, um, did not compare. I was sick the day that uh, the site hearing was held. I was not there at the site hearing. I understood um, that all communities and um, the fort and others are not, and some of the churches are not in favor of this. So my question but, is: yeah. Would this have? Would you have voted yes if and, these had been the conditions that you had voted on? in those meetings? I don't know because I would have voted with the community. I, as a commissioner, I look at the legal aspects and then I look at the moral, ethical, and health aspects of a community. I cannot vote on the law alone because the Second Amendment says I can own a gun, but I can't shoot you. I mean, you know, there's, there's a moral and ethical standard to every law and ordinance. Mm -hmm. But the thing being that I, as a commissioner, did not know that the language had changed until I had gotten to the meeting and the language was handed out to us. I then suggested and made a motion at the commissioner's meeting that this new language should be sent back to the community as a form of democratic government. I would, I would like to have had the ability, and I'm sure the community would have liked to have had the ability to look at the new language prior to the commission's vote. And I made that motion. I voted with the Black Caucus that was there at that meeting, and we all asked to have that language sent back to Lily Banner in the community. And uh, we were overridden, and that's, I understand, Democratic, but, um, you know, and the aspect of, you know, I'll put in something much worse if you don't like that is kind of a threat. Mm -hmm. and, and that bothers me that individuals can threaten 
a community into taking something that they are not comfortable with. And that's that's the thing. If you know, if I'm not comfortable with my, my health or safety or anything of that nature, I'm going to defer to that. And that's what happened at last night's city council meeting where I attended and they had a vote on the McNaughton project. It was housing. Members said yes, we need housing. Don't, 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 don't get us into McNaughton. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, but but the thing is council deferred on safety. Okay. So okay. that's what I'm saying. I'm I'm looking at safety right now. I don't I don't know. I haven't had a chance to see the language environmentally or otherwise. I don't know whether they're having a micro air cleaner there or just a regular old dust collector that you would have in a shop. I've worked in shops before and yeah, dust collectors are great for wood shavings and you know metal shavings and stuff like that off of the equipment. But when you're talking about airborne microbial particles, I would think you know you would want to have something other than a dust collector that may or may not be utilized to its fullest. Okay. Um, so we, we have too many EPA problems now. Okay. Thank you for your testimony. Your time's up. Yeah. Please state your name for the record and when you're sworn in. Yes. My name is Catherine Green. Um, I have been sworn in. I'm the vice chair of the Columbus Southside Area Commission. I'm also the zoning committee co-chair. I do want to make one correction to Mr. Welch's testimony in that no one seemed to know that the uh, merit was on the agenda for that meeting. However, I have the minutes of the zoning committee that were sent to all of the zoning committee members and all of the commissioner members on the 13th of May. That clearly stated all of the different uh, we had six that day, uh, all of them and all of the testimony. I'd like to read the very last piece of, of those minutes, which were approved by the committee. Um, while the vote was unanimously not in favor of an unlimited special permit for a fertilizer business. All indicated an interest in exploring if limitations on a permit could be created and enforced. The committee chairs will explore these options with the city of Columbus with a goal of having a meeting prior to the Columbus Southside Area Commission's May meeting. And that is what happened. We had that meeting um, with Mr. Kirk and Mr. Freeze, Ms. Pine, and Mr. Celebrezzi on that Monday. Uh, we did not make any decisions because it was not a public meeting and it wasn't uh, open to the public. We discussed the set of bullet points uh, that one of the prior um, people had mentioned uh, had, that the uh, applicant had suggested. Uh, they went over what was and wasn't possible to actually be written in as, as language, but then the actual language was drafted only with city staff and the applicant. It was not drafted with the commissioners okay. or city liaison. Okay. However, that was provided to us by Mr. Kirk, I think end of day on Monday. Um, it was given, it was sent to the Reposex uh, Steelton Village Civic Association a leadership. It was shared um, prior to the meetings. And that is what we voted on after a conversation. You voted on the language that came from the city. Correct. At the and so that is the area commission. Yes. Okay. Our zoning policy does not support returning to the civic association if what is being voted on is smaller, kind of similar to what you talked about earlier, one of one of your earlier votes. If it goes down, it gets smaller. We don't send it back through the process. If it gets bigger, then we send it all the way back through the process. It starts over. Okay. Um, so that's the difference in what we both that you voted. And so you do take into consideration what they've said. Absolutely. Okay. So, so I was the one that organized the field trip, if you will, to you know Winchester. Uh, this site, I don't think you have it on. No, uh, any pictures right. of it, but it's within a residential area of Canal Winchester. For those of you who've been to Canal Winchester, it's uh, just across the railroad tracks from their historic. Uh, they have a, a grain elevator, they have a 
train depot and they have a, um, a schoolhouse. So it's adjacent to that. There's the historic society has events there. Um, I did uh, reach out to the business neighbor, um, it, which is Crimson Cup. I got a, a note back from uh, Greg Hubert. Um, there have been no concerns with Winchester Gardens or with John Jordan. I reached out to a residential neighbor that lives on the other side of the uh, historic area. Her name is, well, actually, I'm not going to say it's public record. <laughs> she lives on Oak Street, which is just directly across from the railroad tracks. Uh, she, uh, she, I asked her about negative experiences. She wasn't aware there was a fertilizer producing business there at all. Um, I did offer to uh, anyone else to have her phone number if they wanted to reach out. I did reach out then to the city of Canal Winchester. Lucas Hare is the development director for the city of Canal Winchester. The city has not received complaints and has no concerns in regards to the fertilizer spike business being run from this location. There are no odors, fumes, noises, et cetera, coming from the operations that have caused any concerns from neighbors, et cetera. Mr. Jordan's family previously operated a similar business at a much larger scale on the site. There were no concerns that I can recall in the 12 years that I've worked with the city in regards to this business. Um, in full disclosure, I used to live four houses south of where this business is located. When his family was running the larger business, I was not living there when he was running this business. But I still Canal. have a lot of neighbors. Me in Canal? In Canal. And we still own property actually in Canal as well, in the historic district. Um, but I don't know Mr. Jordan, I don't know Ms. Miller, I didn't meet any of these people until okay. this went through. So um, your time is up. I don't know if we have any other questions. Yes. Did you, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did you experience any issues with the prior operation? His family was operating when you were a neighbor? No, and I went and looked at the, the um, state of uh, Secretary of State. It appears that business was, uh, was there for about 60 years. Um, and again, I lived there with my small children, um, you know, very close to that business pre previous. Thank you. I have a question. So the operation of the Canal Winchester location, this in comparison, this is going to be inside a warehouse. What was the operation there? It was actually open. Uh, so it's two smaller buildings in Canal Winchester. This is under one roof, this new location. They did have some um, materials outside because it was a smaller location. Um, and and the, the, the second building was was actually fairly open to the to the neighborhood. So it wasn't uh, under one roof. Um, there was I mean, there are some some machinery. I mean, I'm not a machinist, but. Uh, he would have been running the pulverizer, I assume, um, within the neighborhood during business hours. Okay. Um, and so there were no complaints that I could glean from the people that I reached out to. That being said, because the permit goes with the property and not the business, we felt it was super important to get those restrictions written to limit any business that might um, operate a fertilizer in the same manner, right? We wouldn't want an unlimited um, business there. Um, a lot of the previous people mentioned, uh, you know, concerns with some of the existing manufacturing businesses on the south side that are not good neighbors. Uh, it's my personal feeling that this business with these restrictions would be a better neighbor than uh, the, than the, what could be in an open manufacturing zoning, which is what they are entitled to. Currently. We also have heard argument that there were promises made and you've lived in this area. So be curious to know your opinion that promises were made, uh, commitments to uh, doing things in the community. Would you agree with that statement that they're not being done? Because your argument now is that it would be better because we're creating this, but there were parameters created before. Yeah. Um, So I went with city staff today to two different businesses on the south side to, to try to resolve code enforcement issues that are occurring between the two and trying to find a, a solution to them. I have not actively engaged with Phoenix or with um, PSC. Um, we did grant the variances for the pallets. Uh, it is my 
expectation that uh, the code enforcement would be able to go in and to make sure that the the fire lanes are maintained there. Um, I'm not aware that there's any code enforcement actions that have been cited, but I mean, it's true that there have been bad neighbors on the south side, and it's also true that code enforcement is deliberative, when you use that term, right? It takes time. The city attorney was at our meeting and she she spoke to that point, right? The due process that they follow. Um, and it is slow from a resident's perspective. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anybody else here that wants to speak about this? I'm I'm closing off neighbor testimony because when I ask the applicant to come back up, you can't then raise your hand and say you have something else. So I just want to make sure everybody that has, wants to be heard has been heard. Okay, the applicant, please come forward. Okay, so we've heard a lot. So I'll let you respond to some of the, those issues. I just want to, um, since I'm limited in time, I want to hit the bigger issues. Um, first, when we first submitted the application and we had communications with the Columbus Southside Area Commission, they relayed that they were getting concerns from neighbors about what was going to be there, what kind of operation it was, and about limitations. So we had worked up a list of um, based upon their concerns and also going to the site visit when they went to Canal Winchester, their concerns regarding no chicken manure. So, you know, no um, processed um, manure, it's bone meal is going to be treated. So we made that original list. It was more bullet point for specific items, chicken manure, bone meal, that type of item, and also the other conditions regarding um, what's the hours of operation, um, which we are still amenable to, and um, the storage. Will be, every, nothing will be outside, everything will be inside. There is reference to the greenhouse, and that is for later on, if you can get city permit approval to test fertilizer, actual greenhouse, not for storage of materials, but to grow vegetables, to test out the, the fertilizer spikes to see how they respond. So it's not like it'll be a storage facility, and that will be later down the road. Um, so question for you, when you talk about the chicken manure and things, there was testimony about you providing a list of ingredients and the person stated that they had done the research that these ingredients would be harmful in the air. Is that, do you remember? It's that? part of the original, they had asked for uh, safety data sheets regarding right. the, the items that they had used, which were provided and were posted for the um, Columbus Southside Area Commission, as well as a link to the website and well as packaging, which listed the ingredients for the product. So everybody could see what was there. Uh, out of the products, there was one item, it's uh, dolomite limestone, which as far as for PPE requires an N95. And PPE is provided to the employees if they choose to wear it for other equipment, but the N95 is um, recommended for the, the dolomite. And it's I believe that's the one. It's mandatory for that one item. Um, so those items, those listings and stuff were provided, trying to work with the area commission to let them know for operation. Um, but as far as the conditions, I don't want to think, I don't want anybody to get the perception that we you know, change the ball, you know, change the guidelines, you know, in some kind of sneaky aspect from the initial civic association. Um, we came up with a list working with the Columbus Southside Area Commission and based upon the concerns, our own list of what we thought um, would address their concerns and which the applicant was agreeable to. After we went to the, um, another somebody else from my office went to the Southside Area Commission, there was questions about whether or not these can be legally enforceable. We we're agreeable to be bound by them, but the question was how can they be enforced and what can be bound? So we reached out, when the application, when these concerns were first brought up, I actually got contacted Mr. Kirk and said, we understand the neighbor's concern. This is a small boutique business. What happens if they move and there's some other big fertilizer plant that comes in? And I asked specifically, can this special permit run just with my client? So if he leaves, the new applicant, no new person, new tenant have to start all over again. And they said, no, it actually runs with the land. So we were open to working with the city to come up with specific restrictions that they were able to enforce, work with Columbus Southside Area Commission. So that's why 
The original list was more detailed, specifying actual ingredients, bone meal, chicken manure, chicken litter, that type of thing. And then when we met with the city, the applicant met with the city, they came down with actual language that they could enforce and was actually more encompassing. It was all, everything had to be pre-processed. So it didn't just hit those bullet points. So it is actually more restrictive and covers more items um, in ingredients that was in the initial list. So, and as far as the hours operation, my client is still amenable to that. It was my understanding they could not, the city was, could not include that language as that was not their portion to enforce. Um, and the other issue was, um, what was the other one? I forget the other one. I'm drawing a blank as far as the other condition that they brought up. Um, so, oh, the initial additional condition of the no nitrates, um, we are fine with including back in that language to the special permit, you know, no the specific ingredients that you referenced that can be considered possibly. So we have explicit. nitrates, sulfates, insecticides, and herbicides. I, I do want to correct you. Sulfates, I do use ammonium sulfate, which is actually used as a bread conditioner. And as a what conditioner? It's a bread conditioner. Bread? A bread conditioner, yes. So you're looking at nitrates, like potassium nitrate and ammonium nitrate. Those are the two ones that you want to include in it. I think we had ammonium sulfate too. No, ammonium sulfate is benign. It's fine. We'll see. Okay. I hear you saying it's fine. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. So you okay? So you're fine with the ammonium nitrate, the insecticides, and the herbicides, but not ammonia, ammonium sulfates. The, correct. That is an ag grade. They use that in agriculture. Okay. So, I would say, um, I don't know what this vote's going to be, but I heard a lot of animus towards you and, you know, alleged animus from you to them. Um, I would say if, if you are approved, you have a lot of work to do. Um, and I'm hopeful that if that's the case, you do become amenable and more open minded. Uh, while they're not enforceable, there are good neighbor agreements that many businesses that come into a community uh, work alongside the community to develop that something that you have for a mutual respect for both sides um, so again i would encourage you to work on all of that if this is approved there can i say one more thing yeah there is one thing i'm very very proud of and the fact that we do support outside outdoor activities i get phone calls every day from my customers thanking me for the product. They're going outside, they're gardening, they're being active. They're not on their phones, they're not inside. That is one thing that drives me is that I get phone calls all the time thanking me for the products. That's good. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can't, you can't operate like that. Sorry, man. It's explosive. Fire. Can you say it on the record, please? He was just saying that it's ammonium nitrate exclusively that seems to be hazardous. Okay. So. Okay. okay. Um, what staff, what was the, I don't think I have it here, but you said that explosive materials are already prohibited. Is there something else that's already prohibited to what section is that? So the section for so I said, I think you have it there. That is a, uh, the explosives was uh, 3387.01. 337.1? 01. 3387.01. I bring that up here on now. I mean, go to you. I believe that was pulled from an email from me. Yeah. It's Dan, right. while you multitask, <laughs> where is this new zoning that's proposed rezoning of the manufacturing? Where is it in the process? So I believe it is still uh, with uh, council activities. Uh, you're talking about the port expansion? No, well, I'm talking about the residential conversion from manufacturing to residential in those two developments that were brought up to us. Right, yes, so that's, that's the port's expansion. Oh, okay. was um, the port, I know, is still wrapped up in council activities. And actually, I don't know if we're talking, I don't know if you can bring it up. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, 20, 20, I don't 20, have... 29. What is it? 23 out of 29. 29. Because I actually don't believe it is being rezoned to residential. I believe it's being rezoned to commercial. But let's 
you know, not speculate, let's confirm. It's not rezoning, it's a, it's a, you know, wait, ma'am, 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 can, can. Well, I, think it's in, in, I think it is in conjunction with the well, zoning variance. Too. So, so the first question, do you want to know the code section that yeah. prohibits the storage? Read the reason the whole one. Right. Yeah, you want to read the section or? I want to, well, I want to small. But. No, I, I, the summer, summary is explosives, manufactured, stored, or sale are strictly prohibited. Okay, so, so manufacturers store for sale, so they couldn't store it. Okay. Now, the design. Yes. All right. Because that has a, that, you know, on this board, we all have a specific discipline generally, and mine being real estate and the impact of value. <coughs> that's, that's really germane to how I might think about some of this. All right, so here is the uh, site that we were talking about that is north of the rail line. This is the Ford expansion. So the Ford expansion first, so that's CV 22104. Here we go. Concurrent to uh, zoning, uh, that's a rezoning, correct? Uh, 22-079. Okay, to LC4. So they are, they are, that, that would be the new zoning. It's commercial is what they're going for. And then the council variance is to allow, if I remember correctly, if I'll, I'll just right here, what am I saying? It's uh, to permit ground floor residential. So they will have residential, but they're going for a council variance to allow that residential on the first floor in a commercial zoning. Yes. So actually, even if this was already through the pipeline, it would not fall under that 600 foot because it's not residentially zoned. It's commercially zoned. But the reality of the use. But the reality of the use. Yeah. You, you yeah. Absolutely yeah. take that into consideration. Absolutely. We're not blind to it. We're seeing Certainly. it written. So yes. I think that that's rel it's relevant for me. 100%. And then the other one. C23-1. This one does not appear to be in conjunction with a rezoning, so this would just be a council variance. So if the rezoning would remain manufacturing. Oh, is wait. this subject to a future, future rezoning, rezoning application? application area commission and acceler oh, that's for accelerated residential review. Yeah, so that's the info on that. Multifamily residential development. In, in the end. <laughs> so they have not filed for the rezoning application then. Correct. Yeah, okay. Can you, can you clarify what is allowed in the manufacturing zone? Everything except residential. So, give me some examples of what the hardcore manufacturing that would be normally allowed in here. Junk and salvage yard. Um, when we bring up, bring up the end manufacturing. That thought junk and salvage yard requires special permit. It does, but it's allowed use in the end district. Okay. Right. But because it is a peculiar kind of use, it has to be the city wants to take another look at it. By making them get a chunk of salvage jar, which is a distinction for me because I'm not a yes on both of these at this point. Okay. <laughs> I, I feel strongly, and I don't know, you know, we can't make them take them separately, but I'm, I think with the limitation text, I'm kind of okay with one, but I'm not okay with the other. So I don't know how we want to do that. How we want to do that? Yeah, I think they have to go together because the building is there. No, we can both. So I did in preparation uh, print out a list of other uses uh, that would be allowed, but with that, um, with that, uh, I believe it's the. Uh, this is this. These are other uses that would be permitted, but would require the six hundred foot buffer. Um, so I can start reading them off. It's a very long list, but I can give you some idea. Um, Alcohol, industrial bleaching, bluing, adhesives, candles, apparently, um, essential oils, uh, what are some other ones? Glue, fuel briquettes, ink, soap, soap products, um, abrasive wheels, stones like abrasive paper, bricks, fire bricks, clay products, glass and glass products, monument and architectural stone, pottery and porcelain products, sand and lime products, stone products, wallboard, plasterboard, bolts and nuts, um, brass and bronze foundries, other foundries, 
Um, let's see what. Hold on. So, Mr. Pollock, I think your point is what could go in here without any kind of BZA oversight? Correct. And okay. that, that's a, a tough question that's because tough. Um, a lot of these have, you know, depending on the, whether it's a more objectionable or less objectionable use, uh, kicks in the separation requirement, the jump and salvage yard, and both, and a special permit. So, it's rare to get anything that requires, that requires that meets both. Uh, does not need a special permit or is within does not have a 600 foot separation. Okay. There are there are quite a few, but it's rare. So, Mr. Jones, you had asked whether they could be voted on separately, the special permit and the variance. My recommendation would be to actually consider them both separately. First, they vote on the special permit, which is a separate process of under 3307.06, and then depending on how that vote goes, or both votes can be done, but I would recommend doing them separately. Thank you. I, and I, but I, how can we do that to yeah. issue a special permit at the location that it, the permit requires it to be? With the same the, way we did um, the marijuana or uh, cannabis or whatever to call it, we can approve the special permit in those cases because we have to, but you still have to get the zoning variance approved, and we didn't agree to that. It's like the Ohio bound case where the medical marijuana yeah. dispensary got the special permit, but they're still dealing with the parking variance issue. Well, no, well, 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 that's not that, that the, the statute for the Ohio medical marijuana specifically said as long as they meet these 3 criteria, which are they present to the area commission and provide notice within 250 feet, the board shall. There's nothing in the special permit section that says that about. But the concept is the same that we can vote yes on one okay. and no on the other. It's okay. meant for purposes of bifurcation. The concept is the same, but I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> we understand that they're different. Okay. okay. Uh, Both synonymous. We're not here to make sure that they get this. We're here to do the right thing, in my opinion. And that's that's kind of where I stand with this. And it should be said basically because that actually brings a good point. Um, the special permit and the variance are actually relating to two different kinds of manu uh, uh, fertilizer being manufactured that this business uh, manufactures both of them, inorganic and organic. So the 3389.083, which is the special permit, the language is um, for, let's see, fertilizer manufacturer from phosphate or organic matter. So that's your organic fertilizer. If they're just doing organic fertilizer, they don't need the 600 foot setback. They just need the special permit. What kicks in the 600 foot uh, uh, setback variance is fertilizer non organic. That is included under the 600 foot. Yeah, absolutely. That's correct. And one more question for staff. And I know I brought this up before. I feel like we've done some special permits for a period of time. And you said no before, I think, right? We, what? We do special permits almost every meeting. For a period of time. Uh, temporary uses, like temporary yeah. parking lots, uh, portable buildings, that kind of thing. That, no. We can only do that on that? We couldn't say? I uh, defer to the city attorney, but I believe we've been told that because if someone, if, if a business owner is going to invest a sizable amount of money in an operation that isn't temporary. That we, if we, but if you give it up front and say we're doing this for a year, then they're fully aware. They make a, a decision yeah. today. I think in the past we've only done it for temporary uses, like a portable building or a temporary parking lot or a sales trailer. And that, I appreciate not, that. Not this type of use which requires one. Like a junk and salvage yard, we'd never do it temporary. Okay. Robert, I, I don't know if that's your viewpoint. Yeah, the, the better practice would be to, to not have a, a temporary use in this circumstance. Thank you. I'm a couple questions. Go ahead. Um, does this operation require any kind of air permit? Uh, in the past, no, it never has. Even before I took took on Winchester Gardens, when my family had the larger operation, there never was any necessary permits for that. Yeah, my concern is similar to my colleague here in that I'm leaning both yes on one and the other one's my concern with the eight, six or feet. Is there anything that you can do to test your odors or something to assure the residents that there is not an environmental issue? I'm a, I'm, I'm from so like I'm familiar with the operations, composting, that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm just trying to think of what we can do to try to alleviate concerns for the, the neighbor residents. And I'm sure the council if there's anything in that. Like a phase one ESA would not help this site because that's pre-existing hazardous look at the property. So I'm trying to think 
Is there something that we can do regarding your operation to show the residents that are within the 600 feet that there is not a detriment to your operation? There's like, I, I, I'm, I'm open. I have no problem with people coming in. You know, it's, 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 uh, there's never had to be testing before in the past. So I don't think there's going to be a problem. So if somebody shows up and says hi and wants to come in, I got no problem with that. Just as long as it's not, you know, a safety hazard or safety issue. So the Department of Agriculture, you have to get the license from them. Is that an annual license you have to get every year? I believe so. Um, I wasn't aware of it until it was brought up and then I was able to get the license. It was simple. Um, do you know if there's any like EPA um, outsources their annual inspections for landfills and transportations to the local health department jurisdiction, whether it's Columbus or Franklin County? Do you know if there's annual any kind of annual inspection relating to the permit? No, there is none. And there never has been in the past 40, 50 years. Oh, I'm sorry. We all have this? Yeah, sure. Oh, license. I thought you said you just got it. Yeah. And it expires. Yeah, I've had it for several weeks. It expires in November. So is it a six month? Uh, it's probably yearly then. But if you've had it six weeks, I've had it. I have, it's approximate. I've had it since uh, after, I think, the first commission. The it's repo was that? Was that? Say it was in May. It's May. And yeah, I think it does renew each year. So maybe it's a six month life. Yeah. yeah. It'll renew each year. It'll re Okay. Well, I'm, it's my first time. So I get it, but I'm saying it expires in November. Okay. So what you're saying suggests it expires every six months or needs to be renewed every six months, is how I'm reading that. Yeah. So your current expiration is in November of this year. I think it's yearly. Okay. And no matter what, like even if I were to get it in October, I would still have to renew it in November, like That's you said. Just cut off. Yeah, it's just the cutoff. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, it sounds like we're going to bifurcate these requests into a vote for the special permit and then a vote for the variance request. To that special permit. And Madam Chair, can I um would that we include the hours limitation, the hours of operation and the condition since I thought we could enforce that. that. Yeah, I don't know that we can. Jamie, before you leave, are we can we enforce a hours of operation restriction? Yeah. I thought that's what yeah. you said that it, it was my understanding when the applicant met with the city, it was not one of the conditions they put in there as an enforcement to go with this special permit. But we are open to those. Yeah, because I'm those chats. I mean, we are fine with that. You got code enforcement coming out because they're operating at 630 and it says six o'clock. Yeah, that'd be an easy one. That would be an easy one for them to um, I've never known us to do that. I haven't either. But I'm just I'm just thinking of future tenants coming in, someone's composting whatever it does, five AM, four AM right. and you're in a residential yeah. area. I'm just thinking of future use, not not your use per se. Oh, oh it's it's ever be future, right? Hour. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's... I mean, I know we've done no loud music over a certain time after time or lights after a certain time um i guess we could impose activity i guess we could impose an activity in any time yeah i i, I think you can bring them out of that bridge what is the what is the um and this is for the special permit so right What's your, what is your proposal? We have put in there for operation with running machinery um, from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. For running operation and deliveries. Like if they have materials delivered in order to make fertilizer between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. Okay, so these are what the conditions that I have on the special permit. I have written specifically, quote, to allow for the manufacturing of organic granular fertilizer and organic, not inorganic, briquettes tablets, both of which using exclusively pre-processed materials, end quote. Then I have the following, these additional conditions. No storage of product or materials outside of the building. All operations will take place inside the building. The applicant, I, I don't even know why this is a, this should be stated in the condition about the greenhouse. 
we need to stay. I mean, that's not, yeah, it's not appropriate to be as a condition. I think we can block that out. Yeah. The greenhouse specifically. I don't know. Yeah. It really has nothing to do with the manufacturing on it. So, yeah. Okay. Well, well, then again, it isn't, as the applicant said, it's an outdoor activity that would utilize their fertilizer for testing or whatever. So. Okay, so we're including that. Okay. Yeah, I would say. So all operations will take place inside of the building with an exception that the applicant may later look into installing a prefab greenhouse of approximately 100 square feet used for testing the materials, not storage, subject to any required suite permits. So we have that language in there yes. used for testing. Yeah, testing of their product. Yeah, I was going to say not not of so their product. Testing of yes. their product. Yes. Right. Three temporary. There may be temporary storage of equipment machinery outside of the building until it has been installed inside the building, or the applicant shall take best measures to reduce the distribution of dust to the exterior of the building and will utilize a dust collector. The additional one that we've added is no ammonium nitrate, insecticides, nor herbicides are permitted. Mm -hmm. And then the additional one that we'll just state for the obvious is the applicant, the operator will be in compliance with 3387.01 regarding explosive materials. Oh, I'm sorry, in the hours of and, and the hours here. No, no running machinery or deliveries outside of the hours of 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. And I don't know if you want to consult the city attorney, but this is the code section that provides the board the ability to efficient approvals. I would I would think that time limiting is included in this section. Would you agree? The board can add it. Yes, yeah, we use that. Well, you can add the hours. Okay. Under that I think that's the distinction. I was thinking for our zone, our general zoning variances, yeah. we don't do timing, but especially the permit. Yeah, the permit. Yeah, that's that's your call. Okay, you in agreement with those conditions? Yes. The board has. I mean, the staff has those noted. Okay. Going one way. Is the building suppressed? Yes. Dry. Okay. And certified. Okay. We are going to take a vote on 3389.083 to issue a special permit to allow fertilizer manufacturer from phosphate for organic matter. I'm ready to call the question. I'll call the question. I need all the conditions. <laughs> Second. Second. So good. Mr. Blocko? Yes. Ms. Eaglehall? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Chair Palmer Bailey? Yes. Okay. Special permit granted. Now we will vote on 3363.19 whether or not to allow a reduction to the residential buffer or more objectionable uses from 600 feet to 145 feet. No conditions on the variance. Um, everybody called the question. Wouldn't you have all the same conditions on this? No, because this would just so be a repair. Yeah. Not just so 300 feet. Huh? This is specifically about the dimension from the next way. I guess what I'm asking is why wouldn't some of the same things like uh, what we permit <laughs> to be manufactured be part of the 300 feet reduction? You know what I'm saying? I hear you, but this is just a yes or a no. Are you okay with it being this operation taking place within 145 feet versus 600 feet? Yeah, we're already. We're it's already this, it has to be specifically this operation. Uh, more objectionable use. So anything listed in that more objectionable use category must be 600 feet from residential residentially zoned property. Okay. Yeah. So so I think the the spirit of your question is true. All of the things that we've said, the conditions apply to the special permit. 
It's just where are you allowed to do those things? Are you allowed to do those things? But then, yeah, I get it. So, um, actually, we just brought up a good point. So, since there are other items in the in the more objectionable uses, if uh, another tenant was going to move in and try to establish a use with uh, that involved one of these other items, they would have to get a separate special permit. The special permit limits it specifically to again the organic and organic fertilizer. Yeah, it's tailored specifically to this use. If so, so if somebody can't come in under that special permit and do bleaching or adhesives or whatever else is on here. Are we, is everybody on the board clear about what we're going on? Do you have any other questions? Okay, are we ready to call the question? Uh, anybody else? Right. I don't know why they are looking at two. Everybody's looking at. Questions being called. Please call the board. Uh, Ms. Engelhoff. Yes. Mr. Jones. No. Mr. Malacca. Yes. Chair Palmer Bailey. No. Barons is not granted. We're going to take a five minute hygiene break. I think so. Yeah. Sorry, I that was pretty for a while. Oh, Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. do appreciate it. That was a long one. I was going to say, I can't promise. Uh, that when the code says, the code that it permits in the settings does it in the And here's the residence. No, for sure. No, like that's what it's there. Exactly. Yeah. The buffer is what it's that was there. So yeah. if if we had no if we had no residents here, then we could say sorry to the set it's not in that box. It was reduced right. from six hundred to five hundred or you know, something right. like negative one. But there's another record I've been to, but it was got stuff. I think that's like they came, they broke the numbers. I think that's fair. Okay, let's say, yeah, I warned you. Right? We, uh, we were, were no, it's it's not in a problem. Yeah, right? Uh, no, not we're living in a matter. He was, which, yeah, should be fine. Okay, so that's then yeah, Johnny was all had to pay such TV and he's getting yeah, he didn't move down on some part of it, so he told him about it. They're John at each other. Yeah, that's what John told us, though. The computer guys. Well, he just submitted a new site for the new Steve. We talked about it. Yeah, no, yeah. They haven't got nine months. What have you planned to do? And that's about my own equipment. Oh, really? Or they're saying they're going to do some stuff. They just use the water. It's a chain link fast. 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 It's a chain link fast
Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, so that, what happens is, uh, let's say, the I mean, it's 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 yeah, so I think, yeah, I think, yeah, see, uh, like it was the site engineer, that is the third leg, it's a list of the wrong but the interview typically will say, you know, I can look at it, yeah, so I have a bit of 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 a that's why Thursday is fine. Oh, that's fine. Thanks for being a little bit. Perhaps I think it's better. I think it's better. I think it's better. I think it's better. I Yeah, I'm not sure. 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 I'm not yeah, that's what the, the news part of the app Oh, is that who that was? In the white. Oh, okay. No, I shouldn't have said I mean, I'll give them a call. How do I know it has? If she asks me, can they still? Yeah, I mean, I first. Really? What? When I put out there on the north, I mean, that would have sucked. 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 Yeah, I 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 would I think they I feel bad with a lot of things. I mean, I wonder how they use Yeah, I'm sure. We do like people call code, of course, because they call the news, they think that was a lot of salt. Technically, I did not be a little bit of a yeah, 
I know you do. Consider I split up the vote now. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was thinking about three three eight. Eight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jamie, have we seen him? He's like 10 pages. I've said that. I'll be for I think the exact same thing they did with that one. Lord, if you want me to hang on to this one, well, they, they have no way to stem to either smaller. Yeah, they can't. Yeah. They, they can't. Can. Can. They can. I mean, all of their recipes, all of their yeah, recipes, they don't call us for inorganic and organic. You can't do it. Right. Right. No, right. 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 We're telling he could do organic. Where he is with no issues. And he's making a conscious thing. He can pull it. That might be what they're out there talking about now. How do we do it? Because I don't think my mind's going to be Can they go back for like sitting with the neighbor all the kind of three of us? I feel like it's time for them before you go back and stay with them. See, they're saying that it's a more interesting way. Yeah, it's a little different. It's just a little bit different. Okay. I feel like it's a little bit different. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. I think it's a little bit different. No, but I mean, like, he gets a lot of vacation. I think very Well, but don't say nothing. He would have to get the material back. It's different. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I need to, but you know, why are you putting torture? Four hours. I'm a team, but I'm a team. Tony's not there. I even told that. This is the the one that I think I've come to get rid of. I've never worked something he did. Sure, that's probably. Okay, this is on our reconvene. He's going back to that. Sorry, there's no mental ones for um, staying the latest. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Come on, Tony. Ready? Are you ready? Yes, okay. 1454 Benson Drive. It's me again. Fourteen fifty four Benson Drive is located on the east side of Benson Drive, approximately six hundred feet northwest of the intersection of Benson Drive and Country Club Road. It is part of the Mid East Area Commission and existing zone is SR Residential District. The 0.2 acre site is currently developed with a single unit dwelling. Surrounding uses include similar single unit dwellings to the north, south, and east, and an elementary school to the west, along with more single unit dwellings. The applicant proposes to convert an existing laundry room into a kitchen. The space that is currently being used as a laundry room was itself converted from a portion of the attached garage by a previous owner, impacting the size of the attached garage. Uh, it's this area here on the right hand side of the plan. Uh, the attached garage was originally built to accommodate one off street parking space. The applicant is thus requesting variances to reduce the minimum number of off street parking spaces from the required two to one and to reduce the required depth of that one parking space uh, to uh, be reduced from 18 feet to 15 feet. Planning supports this proposal as presented. Columbus Citywide Planning Policies Design Guidelines consider support for requested parking reductions on factors such as the extent requested, size and nature of the use, potential impact on adjacent uses, uh, and the presence of on-street parking, among others. Staff consider the requested one-space parking reduction to facilitate interior modifications appropriate 
given the nature of the use is a single unit dwelling, no exterior modifications are proposed, and the unit is in an area where on-street parking is permitted. And therefore, uh, this, uh, therefore support the requested variance. Staff has no comment on the requested parking space depth variance as a C2P2 guidelines do not address this matter. Uh, the Division of Traffic Management is not supportive of a variance that would reduce the minimum parking space depth from 18 feet to 15 feet for a single required parking space on a site. However, the Division of Traffic Management would be supportive of allowing the garage to be used for park, uh, for parking, but not as a required parking space in conjunction with either reducing the minimum required number of parking spaces on the site to zero or alternatively establishing a required parking space within the driveway in front of the garage with code compliant dimensions. Uh, the Mid-East Area Commission recommends approval of this request. Uh, so the City Department's recommend, uh, recommendation is of approval. Uh, staff can recommend approval as the single unit dwelling in question was originally built with a single car garage, which is consistent with other dwellings in the surrounding area. Furthermore, the layout of the garage, which prevents a full 18 foot depth parking space, is an existing condition. Chair. Sure. Okay, so you're basically saying because it's an existing condition, you're not going to require Division of Traffic Management's recommendation that a new parking space be established. Correct. So that is that is one of the discrepancies here because what um, what traffic is suggesting is something that we have also been consistent in recommending disapproval for, i.e., allowing required parking in front of a garage in the building set. Right. So that's more of a following with our established precedent. Okay. I'll track that. Okay. State your name, please, and when you've been sworn in. Yes, ma'am. Miles Garrett. I'm sorry. Could you say that again? Miles Garrett. Yeah, I have been sworn. Okay. Do you have anything to add to this application? Well, yeah, I bought the property this way. I mean, I didn't know the previous owner didn't have it, didn't have it in compliance to, to the garage area there. But I mean, it's about 15 by 11, which, you know, average car sedans can fit. Uh, I just figured I'd just keep reducing down to one. I'm just going to be just to keep it down to one. Okay. Okay. Is there anybody here to talk about this, speak about this application? Do we have any questions from the board? I'll call the question. Question has been called. Please call the roll. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Malaka? Yes. Ms. Eaglehawk? Yes. Here, Colin Bailey? Yes. Experience is granted. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. No. 185 Rework Road. Rework. This is for some translation. But that's in the packet. That's where you're Nobody? Okay. Nobody from that case? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Just go, Sean. <laughs> don't need another four hour case. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, 185 on Greenport Road. Road and it's located on the south side of Greenport Road, approximately 130 feet east of East Torrance Road. It is zone R3 residential and is part of the Clinton Middle Area Commission. The eight of the 0.18 acre site is developed with a single unit dwelling and one attached one deep. Detached garage in the front of the dwelling and one detached garage in the rear of the dwelling. Surrounding uses are primarily residential dwellings. The applicant proposes to raise and rebuild the detached garage in the rear of the uh, rear of the building. And variances are request variances to increase the maximum square footage of the garage from 720 square feet to 864 square feet. And to reduce the building setback for a garage from 25 feet to zero feet. Uh, planning supports the proposal as presented. The Clintonville neighborhood plan states that a residential garage should be placed behind the front facade of the house to de emphasize their visual presence on the street. And that new garages should be um, compatible and similar in character to existing nearby home designs. I do not need to be duplicative of the historic style. 
due to consistency with these guidelines, planning supports the proposal as presented. Division of Traffic Management had no comments, and the Clintonville Area Commission recommends approval of the request. Staff can recommend approval as the proposed garage is um, compatible with nearby designs and the increase in garage height um, results in a roof pitch that is compatible with the dwelling. And we are asking the addition that the elevation be thick to fill the roof pitch of the proposed garage and match that of the dwelling. So, yeah, this one has um, a roof or it has a garage in the front part of the, um, I guess, in the what is that called? Retaining wall. With the retaining wall. Um, and that's those arrows are showing that's just like a design feature of that corner of Clinton. Though. There's several houses that have that front garage. And there's even more than those arrows point to on both directions. But it's it is common at that okay. that corner right there. Okay. Do you have a site plan? Yeah. The one that's in here. Didn't translate. All that is all that is this. That's um, the, this would be a site plan. That's for you to sign for the elevation. But um, the site plans, yeah. This would be the straight up here. Existing garage. So we're we're including language about the front garage only because it's an existing condition, but he's not doing anything to the garage. Well, is he's increasing the square footage? Yeah, well. The Everybody's combined. That's the combined square footage, yeah. So uh, both. both. Yeah, so both rockets. Combined square square footage of um, 864. So what what is he doing to the first the garage on the ground? Nothing. That's what I just asked. Oh, but um, it's part when you calculate the Maximum square footage of oh, four a garage. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So it has to be in blue. Gotcha. square footage back yeah. seat seven twenty. Gotcha. So the combined square footage is equal eight. Yeah. But again, still in existing condition. Well, it's not existing because they're raising and rebuilding the rear garage, which increases the number. Right, but the existing condition of the existing garage, the two car garage, and the one car is still more than seven twenty. It has to be. It's a three car garage. That thing is a three car garage. Oh, no, I'm saying the existing oh. condition is a two car and a one car oh, built in. Is you right? Yeah. We're just we'll tie it tonight. Take this a while to get it right. So okay, the, the garage setback from twenty five to zero is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that. no, that's the. The, the one 10 feet from the property down line, private garage. The, uh, you know what? It's it's changed from what I said. Because um, that was a discussion that we had with uh, zoning clearance, and they wanted the language to be uh, to allow a detached garage and a retaining wall located 10 feet from the property line. And the other variance they're looking for is to increase the maximum square footage of a garage from 720 square feet. To 864. Yeah. So it would be reduced from 25 to 10 for the front. Not to zero. Not to zero. Not yeah, to yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I was looking for. That was how we originally wrote it. Okay, 25. Yeah. And then we had the success right Yeah. Okay. Can you state your name? What did you do this morning? Uh, Sean McNeil, and I have not been sworn in. Okay, can you raise your right hand? You promised that the testimony you give tonight for the truth, nothing but the truth. Please say I do. I do. Okay. Do you have anything to add to this? Yeah, so um, just to try to clarify it a little bit, the homeowners want to build a garage in the back. Uh, there is an existing garage in the front, which they don't actually use as a garage um, because of the way the code is written. That is included in the 720 square feet. They're not building a large garage by any means, it's just a two car garage. But because they have an existing one in the front, that causes that problem. When I submitted for the variance application, they said there's two options. One, okay. you can you can ask for the variance for the for the back, and we need that variance. But the one in the front, they said you can ask to have it legitimized, legitimate to, to legitimize the um, the use of that garage itself. Um, it doesn't have to be because it's not conforming. It's not like they can the city can make them tear it down or anything like that. It's just it's always been there. It's been there for. Mm -hmm. 80 years or something like that, but 
Okay. So that's the that's the second. That's part. where the second variance is. Yep. It's a request, but it, it, it's mm -hmm. like I said, it's not okay. necessarily the, the whole intent is to build a new garage in the back, which is the first Just one. a standard two car garage in the back. Yeah, yeah I think we okay. do that anytime you change, you do something to the property. They can really take kind of the grandfathering out, and now makes it more legitimate. They take the grandfathering out when you request when you tear it down and you request and you start asking for a new permit to rebuild it. Yeah, it's grandfathered in until you do that. As far as I know. Okay. Any other questions for this applicant? Is there anybody here to speak about this application? Oh. Okay. Everybody call the question. I call the question. Question has been called. Please call the roll. Mr. Malaka. Mr. Malaka. Mr. Malaka. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Edelhoff. Yes. Mr. Jones. Yeah. Jerry Palmer Bailey. Yes. Variance granted. Thank you. Forty-five eighty-six. Starrett. Star Road. I'm David Osmond, and yes, I've been sworn. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, great. So, X first one. Uh, 4586 Starrett Road is located on the east side of Starrett Road, uh, approximately 200 feet south of West Weichheimer Road. The site is zone R3 residential and is located within the Clintonville Area Commission. The uh, site is developed with a single unit dwelling surrounding each of our primarily single unit residential dwellings. The applicant proposes to raise and rebuild the single unit dwelling and request a variance to reduce the required rear yard from 25% to 14%. I believe the aerial is the best depiction of what's going on here. Uh, so the Clintonville neighborhood plan states that the new housing should be of quality design with which contributes to the neighborhood. It should be compatible and similar in character to existing nearby homes, home designs measured in terms of height, width, setbacks, and lot coverage. Uh, the Division of Traffic Management has no comments and the Clintonville Area Commission recommends approval. City staff can recommend approval as the request is technical in nature. The owner's lot stretches across Starrett Road, creating an unusual lot size and shape. So I have, if, this lot, if this lot were not as large as it was, it would still need a, a rear yard variance, but a much to a much lesser degree because the lot literally goes into half of Old Indian River Road, it creates quite the uh, reduced rear yard in consideration of the size of the front yard. So, staff is recommending approval. Um, we have no conditions. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Mr. Osmond, do you have anything to add to this application? Just only that with uh, the site plan and everything, as you see, it goes to the middle of the river, as he said. Um, the rear yard, we're actually increasing the size of the rear yard um, from about 9.6% to 14.3. So we are actually increasing the, the size of the rear yard. And in doing so, um, I don't know, it's at the auditor's website uh, plan up there. But basically, it keeps the house in line with the homes to the north and yep. the south. Oh, all okay. the other homes on the road. Okay. There isn't a house. Between there and Anderson Road, that has a twenty-five percent rear yard. Okay. Okay. So, any questions for this applicant? No one's here to speak about this application. Are you ready to call the question? I'll call the question. Person can call. Please call the roll. Uh, Ms. Siegelhoff. Yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Mr. Malaka. Yes. Chair Bar Bailey. Yes. Van Granite. Thank you. Eight ninety seven Lock Avenue. All right. Eight ninety seven Lock Avenue is located on the south side of Lock Avenue, approximately four hundred and thirty feet east of Wilson Avenue. It's part of the Far South Columbus Area Commission and existing zoning's R two residential district. The point uh, one six acre site is currently developed with a detached single unit dwelling. Surrounding uses include similar detached single unit dwellings. The applicant proposes to construct a detached garage in the rear yard of the property. In a previous hearing, uh, the applicant had requested a variance to allow for the proposed garage to exceed the maximum allowable lot area, but this previous application had been denied. 
The applicant has since uh, revised their proposal to only require the following variance to reduce the minimum required side yard for a detached garage from three feet to two feet. So they have gotten their square footage down to the code required 720 square feet. Uh, the applicant is responding to a building code violation order number 2200147 from November 3rd, 2022, for building without permit. Planning is generally supportive of the proposed variance. C2P2 states that accessory buildings uh, should be located to the rear of the principal building, which is consistent with the request. Uh, they have since moved to full support after seeing uh, uh, elevations, uh, proposed elevations. So they're in full support. Division of Traffic Management has no comments, and the Far South Columbus Area Commission recommends approval of this request. Likewise, the City Department's recommendation is that of approval. Staff can recommend approval as the applicant has revised their proposal to bring the garage size into compliance with City Code and has ensured that the new footprint shall not be installed over the existing sewer lateral, which was also an outstanding issue with the last, uh, last case. Uh, the remaining side yard setback variance is of a negligible degree from three feet to two feet. Thus, staff can recommend approval of this request. Chair. Okay. Can you state your name whether you were sworn in? Do what? State your name and whether you were sworn in. John N. Williams. I'm the agents for the homeowners. Were you sworn in? Were you sworn in? Did you take an oath? Okay. Do you promise that the testimony you give tonight will be the truth and but the truth? Please state I, I do. I do. Okay, go ahead with your testimony. I have nothing to say. That's fine. I don't want to get out of here. Yeah. 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 Does the does the board member do the board members have any questions for the applicant? No. Okay. There's no one here to speak about the application. Are you ready to call the question? <laughs> I'll call the question. This has been called. We call them. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Palaka? Yes. Mr. Sigalov? Yes. Sarah Paul Bailey? Yes. Mayor's Granny? I would also like to thank the board and the staff. It's been a pure joy. <laughs> <laughs> Our guys are not evaluating. <laughs> Just a reminder I'm not here this morning. Oh, okay. Uh, up a Ready for the challenge? Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.